So this show, we haven't watched in, watched in, I don't know, a month or so. So, you know, we weren't quite up on everything that was going on. And there was a brief video package intro, and then suddenly there were just six dudes fighting. Yeah. And we were left to fend for ourselves and figure out who was on what team and what was going on. Before we get to this match, the important detail here that we got to get into is the announcing situation. Taz has quit. And so after doing commentary by himself for a couple of weeks, Josh Matthews is now being joined by Al Snow. And I usually try to zone out the announcers because they virtually unanimously suck. But I decided to pay attention here because it was Al's first day. And I guess he was all right. He said a lot of stuff like, those things sting. They hurt really bad. He had, in two hours, he had like two very terrible moments, which we will get into. But uh, by and large, he was just a guy. My my question is, where's Mike Tanay? I don't know. Why can't Mike Tanay do this opposite Josh Matthews and not Al Snow? I I don't know. Maybe because Mike doesn't have a cool jacket like Al does. Well, I guarantee Mike. Wait, Mike lives in Vegas. That's true. It has to be where Al got this. this I'll bet you anything he could get a cool outfit like that. Only explanation. So it turned out this was the Hardys and Davey Richards versus Manic and Abyss and Koya. And Koya, if you've forgotten, is that dude from India who is now part of James Storm's crew. Which I had forgotten, by the way. Until right now? Uh, I, I, I remembered him when you mentioned him, but when the, when the men first came out, I had no idea who he was. No. Now why would you? So they did 20,000 moves in about five minutes. Um, highlights were D- Davy Richards using a move called Creeping Death. <laughs> so it kills you slowly. Yeah. So I hope this match has a long time limit. Otherwise, it would have no effect. Also, fact of life here, I hope Matt Hardy has enjoyed his many years of having long hair because they're coming to an end. Oh, man, Vinny. You have to point I, that out. The poor guy's probably bothered enough by it. And I'm, I'm hey, my, 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 my hairline's not where it used to be either. Just time for a change, man. Time for a change. So, if you like watching a beehive... Can you imagine Matt Hardy shaving his head? Not just shave his head. He can get a haircut. <laughs> just cut the top where it's going. <laughs> and that's a great idea. <laughs> when you when you mention... When, when you put it that way, it sounds like a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Man, why didn't he do that earlier? Or he can just end up like Hulk Hogan if that's what he wants to do. It's his head. So if you like watching a beehive, you like watching this math ma- match, just bodies flying. If you like her. watching a beehive, yeah, just frenetic activity, with no point to any of it. And then eventually the Hardys won with the senton, and James Storm came out and chewed out his dudes for losing. Well, he chewed out Abyss because Abyss lost. Mm. You were busy playing solitaire or minesweeper. You missed the finish. At least I asked you what it was. But, hey, you said it was a senton. I wrote it down. You're lucky that I wasn't able to rewind, or I would have gone back to the beginning of the match. The point is, in five minutes, I zoned out. They, they, I, I lost interest in the match. It was a generic hardcore match. It was generic six-man spots, utilizing the six men. There was nothing to see here. Okay. Ken Anderson was in a shirt and tie, saying EC3 was boring. And we would want to be there when he unveiled his sign. <laughs> when he unveiled his sign. Once you know what his sign was, to think that he previewed this by saying we would want to be there when he unveiled and, it. In hindsight, I don't think it was really that big a deal. Uh, they announced that Billy Corgan had joined the company. Oh, yeah? All the press they had gotten for that. Then Anderson came out, came out for a promo, had a bunch of gimmicks in the ring. Ethan and Tyrus came out. So Ethan's doing a campaign gimmick. Or I guess he wants fans to vote for him for being a champion in 2015. I don't know if he wants them to vote, but he's just, he's he's announcing his candidacy for the championship. I see. So I guess it's kind of like the old NWA. He wants the board mm. to vote him in as champion, I guess. He did have a line here where he claimed to be, and I quote, the first person to bring politics into wrestling. <laughs> That's what he said. That was the highlight of the whole show right there. He's got a lot of... Funny lines that he delivers well. He is a good comedian, yes. So Anderson's sign he finally revealed was that he's going to campaign to beat the streak. Oh, man. I know it's hard because 
it is an undefeated streak and everything like that. And that's a term that's used in sports and, well, probably just sports. But you just can't use the term streak in wrestling unless you're WWE referencing The Undertaker. That's it. Like, as soon as he comes out and he's got a sign to beat the streak, is there one human being on this earth that has watched any wrestling that didn't immediately think of The Undertaker and Paul Heyman? Because I found it to be quite impossible. But yes, that is his goal, to beat the streak. And he's going to be talking about it on TV. Next thing you know, he'll be talking about being the one in whatever it was. <laughs> 50 and one? Something like that. I don't know. So they agreed to a match on May 8th. My point is oh. his sign sucked. Yeah. <laughs> they agreed to a match on May 8th, which is next week, now that, now that I think about it. And the gimmick is the fans would vote for the Stips. And wait till you hear what those steps are. Oh, yeah. It was hilarious, actually. I thought it was great when they announced what the options it were actually for was. the fans. It was. The, the, the deal, I'm pretty sure they're, I'm pretty sure they've taped far past May 8th. I could be wrong, but they're doing a live show in the middle of stuff that's already been taped. It's wacky. But yeah, that's uh, this coming Friday, everybody. They had a four way for the X Division title. The champion, Rockstar Spud, defending against Kenny King, Tigre Uno, and the guy with the worst name I've ever heard, Mandrews. That is, in fact, his name. His name is actually Mark Andrews, they said, but no, he calls himself Mandrews, and in fact, he went on about gear that has Mandrews written on it. If you looked like Hanson... And I'm talking Ring of Honor's Hanson. Mm -hmm. And your name was Mark Andrews. Yeah, maybe you could go by Mandrews. But this young feller, God bless him, of course. He's 23 years old. He's skinny. He's got a terrible 90s haircut. The one where you let it grow about four inches, and then you shave all around the sides, and you bleach it blonde, and you let the roots grow out. I'm pretty sure I had that in 1993. He's a good athlete, but he looks like an indie guy. And yes, across the waistband of his tights, the 29-inch waist on these tights, I might add, it says, Man Drews. This ain't gonna work. No. As I wrote here, he has horrible gear and an even worse haircut, and none of that matters because his name is fucking Mandrews. <laughs> He will always be a failure as long as that's true. Yeah, Mandrews has got to go. Yeah. So this may have been the exact same match as the opener. A bunch of dudes running around in and out of the ring doing a bunch of spots, flipping around and doing weapon stuff. Tigre Uno did most of the cool stuff. I liked his Spanish fly off a ladder. I liked his bring big springboard onto the ladder. And then Spud knocked... King off the ladder. He appeared to have the match won, but Homicide ran in and yanked him off the ladder. Spud fell, landed on a ladder in the corner. That looked brutal. He goddamn near killed himself, and there was not one replay. No. And then King climbed the ladder and grabbed the belt and won. I was very, very sad to see Spud lose his X title after just one month. It got over so big when he won it, and now he's no longer the champ. But fear not! Spud had a great promo later. That's There's actually a lot of good promos on this show. I will say that. Including the next one. Before that, they revealed the options for the EC3 Mr. Anderson match. You can vote for two options. Which you would rather see. <laughs> Option A, arm wrestling. <laughs> yeah. Or B, falls count anywhere. Yes. This may be a unanimous vote. I loved it because I presume in storyline they went to each man separately and they said we're going to do a fan vote. So Anderson if we were to give you the option of any match in the world that you could have with this feller what would it be? And Mr. Anderson said Falls count anywhere. Anywhere. And then they go to EC3 and they said, if you could have 
any match in the world with Mr. Anderson, what match would you like to have? And EC3 was not only so confident that he could beat this man in an arm wrestling match, but he actually thought, he actually thought that the fans would vote for his option. And so that's what he gave. When I saw arm wrestling match as EC3's suggestion, I just about lost it. This man is great. It was funny. And by the way, Hillbilly Blood is coming to Destination America. I don't know what the <laughs> fuck that is. We watched this uh, on the internet, uh, and the person who uploaded this had removed all the ads. And I was so sad, because Josh read the uh, you know little text thing they get to plug the Hillbilly Blood, Hillbilly Blood preview. And he's reading it. He never explained what the show was or what it was about or anything. And he said, here's our preview of Hillbilly Blood. And I leaned forward. <laughs> to see what happened next. And then sadly, it was just back to Impact Wrestling. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. I'm upset. Oh. <laughs> what do you want me to add? <laughs> well, I saw you touching, fiddling with buttons and stuff. I thought we'd get the, you found the trailer online or something. Oh, God, no. All right. A trailer for Hillbilly Blood? I don't know. Well, maybe there is one. An Hold ad? On. Maybe that's a better term. So, should I continue or do you want to wait? I'm trying to find a Hillbilly Blood promo. There is a 30-second... Perfect. All right. Stand by. There's going to be a stupid advertisement first. Of course there is. Oh, wait a minute there. Or or I can do one of these stupid... Quizzes? Which of the following have you heard of? Who cares? All right, here we go. The Hillbilly Blood commercial. It is premiering soon... On Destination America. Actually, this is from 2012. <laughs> We're going to go with it anyway. Destination America introduces proud hillbillies Eugene and Spencer. It's 50% hippie and 50% redneck. Take the best of both and drop the worst and you got a hillbilly. Ruined moonshine has to be done in secret because if you get caught, you go to jail. What part of the squirrel you want? Part just got meat on it. Get more wisdom from Eugene and Spencer. Being hillbillies, it's in their blood. That really is the best squirrel I've ever had. I get it. Hillbilly what false blood. advertising? That's the, the catch line. Hillbillies are in their blood. I see. I thought that hillbilly blood would be shed or something it crazy. It sounds like a slaughter film, doesn't it? It does. Hillbilly blood. How can you have hardcore justice and advertise hillbilly blood? Is about to debut and not have people think it's going to be a bloodbath of some sort involving hillbillies. I don't know. Eric Young came out for a promo. Happy up his stretcher match with Kurt Angle tonight. It was good. It was very long. And the crowd was giving him the what treatment like crazy. Fuck them. <laughs> this was a great promo. He vowed to end Angle's career tonight. This was the best thing on the show up to this point. A fabulous promo by Eric Young. Hyping up his match with Kurt Angle, his stretcher match tonight. He said he was a world-class man, which I agree with after seeing this promo. Beatdown Club got a promo backstage. Crew. Huh? Crew. Beatdown Crew? Yes. And it was not Clan. So it's Crew. <laughs> Actually, wasn't it Clan for a while? Maybe it wasn't. I think, spoiler, I think when they first debuted... Uh, the tapings were got out. It was Clan, and then when the thing actually aired, it was not Clan. It was Crew. I see, but it's not Club. Crew. No, it's Crew. The Beatdown Crew. Beatdown Crew. They had a promo backstage. They were celebrating King's Championship win and telling Loki to go beat up Drew Galloway. I can understand why everybody was wearing the Beatdown Crew gear, except for MVP, the leader, who was wearing a generic Cassius Clay shirt, which I'm pretty sure you can't buy at the TNA store. No, he doesn't care. No, he does not. <laughs> Spud was backstage. Now, we've seen Spud for, God, probably two years in this show. Yeah. Cut a lot of promos. Cut a lot of really good promos. But he's always been, uh, for lack of a better word, in character. And for the first part of this promo, his guard was down. And he was not speaking with his rock star Spud TNA Impact voice. He was speaking as whatever his own real name is. And I know this because for the first time I've ever heard him speak, his accent was so thick I couldn't understand him. Wow. He was, he was, I, don't, I don't even mean this as a knock, honestly. 
He was speaking softly. Uh, he was honest, and he was the what I got out of this the first half of this. He was absolutely devastated by his championship loss. Yes, he was so finally despondent and distraught that he could not be bothered to put on a show. He had to expose his own voice and, in fact, his own soul. This ruined him. He started listing off great X Division champions of the past, including AJ Styles. So he was so proud to be on that list. And suddenly he started screaming about how much it meant to him to be on this list of great champions, how 14 years he had put in trying to earn that belt. And then after he had finally pulled it off, it was stolen from him. Stolen, he said. He could not stand by this. And he looked at him in the camera and he vowed that one day, some way, he was going to win that belt back. That was fucking awesome. It was fabulous. That was awesome. For all of the things you can say about TNA, and there's plenty, every now and then they take a guy who, for whatever reason, perhaps a prior regime, has just been doing a bunch of comedy bullshit. Kurt Angle was doing it when he was in WWE, so he doesn't... He, actually, he does count, because they could have done the same thing when he came to, to TNA. Kurt Angle, Eric Young, all of his goofy comedy gimmicks, Spud. Every now and then, they'll take a guy like that, and they'll just one day decide, time for this guy to be a serious character now. And once this person becomes a serious character, they're five billion times better. Kurt Angle in TNA... I know that some people will disagree with this because WWE is the number one promotion in the world and he headlined WrestleMania and all that kind of thing. Or, But the reality is, Kurt Angle is so much more effective in TNA than he ever was in WWE. That's a fact. His character in TNA is a billion times better than it ever was in, in WWE. Unless you were just entertained by his goofiness and his comedy. But as far as like being an effective, believable character, way better in TNA than WWE. Eric Young now is a serious, badass, crazy man, lumberjack, way better than that super Eric bullshit that we had to put up with for a decade. And now here we are with Rockstar Spud. This guy is tiny. He's diminutive. He's virtually a mini. In fact, if he were in Mexico, he'd probably be a mini. But they decided now he's a serious character. And while he may never be taken seriously to the level of a larger man... Holy shit what they've done with this guy. And yes, this promo was so awesome. Everybody should watch this promo to find out how a man feels when he loses a fucking belt. He's not happy. He's not indifferent. He's yes. ruined. Devastated. It's all he can think about now. So from there we go to the dollhouse. It's uh, Terrence Terrell... Our new friends, Jade and Marty. And they are crazy grown women who like to play with dolls. And this was, at the same time, both the stupidest thing I ever saw, but also the scariest thing I ever saw. It is effectively creepy. <laughs> so they came out, it was uh, Taryn versus Brooke. And the scary, crazy women came out playing Ring Around the Roses. The only, the only real flaw in this is the music is... Just slow, creepy, like, toy box music, toy piano music. Doesn't really work. It needs to be, uh... Actually, I thought it worked great. Mm -hmm. You're just you're just sad that they're no longer playing Hot Mess. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. I thought about it immediately. <laughs> so, the most noteworthy thing in the entire show happened in this match. Terrence started rubbing Brooke's face in the mat. And Al said, the surface of that mat is as rough as sandpaper. That's right. There's a brief, cop, brief pause. And this is such a ridiculous claim that Josh could not let us stand and had to call out what it, how stupid it was to say this. You don't bleed when you roll around the mat like you would on sandpaper. This is a stupid thing to say. But Al wouldn't let it go. Al said, well, you couldn't polish a board with it, but it's coarse like canvas. This is all very stupid. You know, you know what? I, I have a completely different take from you. Josh, Josh fucking Matthews says, Al, this canvas is not like sandpaper. I've been in the ring. And I'm like, say whatever the fuck you want about Al Snow. 
But that fucker's been in the ring a lot more than you have, geek. That's true. And let me tell you something about the canvas. Yes, it's not like sandpaper. But you know what? It is fucking coarse. Exactly like Al Snow said. There was a point to what Al Snow was saying. If you And of course, every canvas is different. Some canvases are kind of made of like rubber. and uh, But a real, like, it's called canvas for a fucking reason. Like, a burlap bag, if I if I covered a ring with a burlap bag, a burlap sack, like that you go down the big fucking slide at the fair on, if I, if I covered the ring canvas with that, yes, it ain't sandpaper, but you know what? While you wouldn't bleed, it would still be fucking uncomfortable if you rubbed someone's face on that. Just like it would be if you rubbed someone's face on the canvas. And Josh would not let this go. Nor would Al. And at the end of the day, all I could think was, all right, forget the argument. Forget who's right about the viscosity of the canvas. Shouldn't Josh's role be to make you, the viewer, think that, in fact, this is kind of dangerous and hard? And that maybe it would hurt to have your fucking face rubbed on the canvas? And he's sitting there just completely blowing off and acting like Al's an idiot who's never been in the ring. Brian. I just wanted to punch Josh. Shouldn't Josh have some credibility? I know, Vinny, but I know what Al Snow was trying to say, and he's kind of right. I mean, it is, no. th there is a, there is a, a... I know uh, you've never used sandpaper. I know it's not like sandpaper, but it's not like it's smooth as silk. It's not rubber. I'm sure having your face rubbed in the burlap would not be comfortable. Sandpaper would cut you open 5,000 times. Or maybe you have better sandpaper than I do. I have, I have gentle... You've never used sandpaper. I have. What are you, sanded? Seriously, what in your life have you sanded? You don't think I had to do wood shop in fucking junior high? Of course I did. I see. Yes, I made a cutting board for my mother, which involved fucking sandpaper and glue and a saw. I'm gonna get Lance on, see Hold where he falls. Hold your fingers up, here. let me count them. I don't believe this. Ah, uh, that's, well, that's two fingers, yeah. <laughs> Who cares? We're worse than they are. <laughs> Although, you know why we're not worse? No, actually, I don't. I'll tell you why. Because no one's cutting the video of us talking about That's this solid. in the middle of this podcast. That was a solid point. I'm watching Brooke Tessmacher and Taryn Terrell have a wrestling match, and they're showing me a split screen of Al, Snow, and Josh. Get the fuck out of here. Who so cares about see. what the announcers look like and where they're at and they're in their wherever they're at now? They're no longer in a hotel. They're in a... They're like in wood shop, actually, except there's a monitor there. They put up some kind of backdrop and a monitor behind them, so it looks much more professional than the closet they were in. There's still, like, random wood framing on either side. But regardless, we don't need to see them. No, we don't. So, Jade and Marty interfered, and uh, Taryn won with an RKO. Then they put a jawbreaker in her mouth, in Brooke's mouth, which is their uh, calling card, I guess. And Taryn, <laughs> Why? Uh, probably because somebody saw the film Jawbreaker twenty years ago and always they always 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 creep them out. Tell me about this movie. And it's a movie about Mean Girls, and actually, I never I never saw it myself, but I'm familiar with the concept. There are Mean Girls. They uh, bully and harass the unpopular girl into trying to eat an entire Jawbreaker at once, and she ends up dead. Oh wow! Oh yeah. So they're trying to kill their opponents. They're trying to get her to choke on the Jawbreaker. This should not be allowed. Well, that's why they're peels. That's attempted murder here. So, anyway, Taryn wins, and she starts cutting a promo about how Kong couldn't beat her and nobody can beat her. And then Gail comes out, but Taryn screams she's not in Gail's shadow anymore. And Gail better not fight her because there's three of them and one of her. And Gail says, I'm not alone. And awesome Kong comes out, and they have a stare down. And then it ends. Yep. Yeah, that's the uh, the dollhouse, everybody. That sure was the dollhouse. Taryn actually is a good leader for this group. I do think that she is is great in the role of the bitchy blonde dollhouse leader. With that said, she has not had one good match since she got pregnant, and I'm pretty sure she only had two good matches before she got pregnant. If only we had someone here who could vouch for Taryn's ability to play a bitch. On that note, Drew Galloway came out. <laughs> wow. Came out to Russell low-key. Hey, I don't know. I'm asking. 
So Drew Galloway versus Loki in a pipe on a pole match. <laughs> okay. The most Freudian thing ever. There needs to never be a pole match in this business again. Ever. It's never need to see one ever again. It is impossible to think about a pole match without thinking about the death of WCW or Vince <laughs> Russo. It's impossible. Not to mention, this pole match was so dumb. This was the stupidest match I ever saw. I mean, the guys worked well. I mean, Drew well, McIntyre's very good. Loki's yeah. very good. But the pole, the, the, the pole on the pole match just, it killed the match. It made the match a hundred times worse. Which, a stipulation should only add to the match. It should never detract. Oh, this detracted. <laughs> this Holy detracted. God, this detract. Yes. Okay, first of all, remember, let's start from the get-go. This was the 47th match in the show where they started brawling everywhere and hitting each other with weapons. And let's get back to that last word there. Weapons. The whole point of this match is that you fight to get the pipe, the weapon, and then you can use it to kill your opponent. Correct. The first thing they did was start hitting each other with chairs and stairs. Why bother fighting for the pipe when you have these things to hit each other with instead? It gets better. So they chair at each other, they stare at each other, and then they started fighting with their hands. Like I'm supposed to care about punches and chops after seeing men hit each other with steel. And perhaps sensing my uh, questioning of this, Al Snow chimed in, saying that a well-thrown well chop could stop your heart. <laughs> no, that's not what he said. He said it could cause your heart to seize. <laughs> Those are his exact words. A chop could, quote, cause your heart to seize. <laughs> what does that even mean? I don't know. I go. I thought of it. Stop your heart. It sounds bad. It does sound bad. Let me find the definition of seize. So they're doing this match to take hold of suddenly and forcibly. Become stuck or jammed. Oh, that's no good. <laughs> that chop jammed my heart. You don't want that. This is like it's jammed full of blood. It needs to be unjammed. I'm not even sure if that's what a heart attack is. Is a heart attack a jammed heart? I think so. Uh. Your your arteries get clogged and then blood gets jammed. So they do in this match and they set up a chair, set up in the ring, and Drew is doing the bad ribs gimmick. And so they put his ribs against the top of the chair, and Loki comes off with the foot stomp onto Drew's back, driving his ribs into the chair. This looks savage and brutal. Where is the line about causing your heart to seize after that one? Yeah. And uh, again, I ask, why would you bother fighting for the pipe when you can do stuff like this with chairs that are so much easier? So eventually they start fighting for the pipe, and then the damn thing falls off the pole and bounces around on the mat. Made them both look like complete idiots. It's just typical. So finally... It's a pole match. It's no good, ever. <laughs> so finally, after all that, Drew finally gets a hold of the pipe. Yes. The whole point of this match has been achieved. The whole point of this match is that two men are struggling and the first one who gets the pipe can use it to destroy his opponent and claim certain victory. So Drew gets his pipe. He misses with it. Loki gets the pipe. He also misses with it. And then Drew hits his DDT and wins. <laughs> can you repeat that one more time, Vinny, for the, for the benefit of those who may have zoned out in the middle of that in the middle of that recap, how did Drew McIntyre win, you say? Drew got the pipe, but he missed with it. Low key got the pipe, but he missed with it. And then Drew hit his DDT and won. So are you telling me that in a pole match between Low key and Drew McIntyre, they spent 95% of the match using other weapons on each other. Mm -hmm. And in the final 5% of the match, the pipe was achieved... Yet, neither man was able to successfully use said pipe, and then one man pinned the other man with a wrestling hold? That is correct. That is 100% correct. Well, that sounds like the stupidest fucking match I ever heard of in my life! It was really goddamn dumb. Like, the, the, the pipe, if you actually look at the how effective it was, it was a significant handicap. It was a hindrance to yes, this match in it was every a, way. A, it was a burden to the wrestler who had it. It made you a shittier wrestler. They should have been fighting to get the pipe and put it back on the pole. So, as I said, this is not the worst match I ever saw, or close to it. It wasn't even really that bad. 
It was just stupid. It was a it was a picture perfect example of a match that was hurt desperately by a stipulation. There In may fact, have never been another match hurt more I, by a stipulation. I was than just this say, one. I'm trying to think of a better example. Think of a match with a stipulation that was that was that the stipulation hurt it worse than this match. I actually did. do have one. It was also in TNA. I remember when James Storm and Chris Harris had the blindfold match where the blindfolds wouldn't stay on? Yeah, that was a bad one. That was worse. But uh, since then, I can't think of any. So again, I plead anybody within the sound of my voice to never, ever, ever, for the love of God, book a pole match again in the history of this business. Let's just retire it with this match and be done with it. He had a bit with uh, Magnus asking a camera crew to follow Mickey. Mm-hmm. He was worried about James Storm harassing her. So rather than, I don't know, I can think of a hundred things to do, he, he decided to put a camera crew on her. And so Mickey went to the store with her baby, and James Storm wanted to hold the baby, and she let him. And Storm asked, hey, where's Nick? <laughs> Nick. And she said, oh, he's in the room. And Storm said, oh. And they went shopping together. That's right. So Magnus came out to cut a promo about this. But before he could even speak, Storm came out. Storm essentially said, I've known Mickey a lot longer than you have. We were pretty close. You should probably ask her how close we were. And he left. This is, honest to God, one of my favorite storylines in wrestling right now. If you've been watching the show of late, which believe it or not, I have. James Storm, Mickey James, and Nick is really a great storyline because James is a heel with everybody except Mickey. And whenever Mickey's around, he's a babyface and he's always trying to help her. And Nick, Magnus, doesn't trust the guy. And the heel is explaining to him that... You're the guy in the wrong, buddy. You think I'm stalking this girl, but you're the guy that went out and, and you got someone to follow me around and spy on me. Maybe you're the one that doesn't trust Mickey. It's fabulous, this storyline. And everybody involved in it is playing their role to perfection. This is a great Angle. Angle cut a promo threatening to break Eric Young. We got Young versus Angle in a stretcher match. You know, this is another one that made me mad. So, in fact, we just saw, what was a match at Extreme Rules that I just thought was so dumb? Let me look at the card here, because this will lead into what I'm talking about. There was, oh yeah, it was the Russian chain match, where John Cena and Rusev are going to have a Russian chain match, and they're playing it up in storyline like the idea is, you must beat your man so badly that you can go and touch all four corners in succession. And the only way to do that is to beat him so badly that he can barely stand. And then they go there, and every single time in one of these matches, it's just like luck of the draw finish. Both men touch the thing, one guy lucks out, touches the last one, he wins. And that's exactly how it was on this Russian chain match. So this is a stretcher match where the deal should be, you have to beat this dude so badly that you can lay him on a stretcher. And the way the WWE does it is, you lay him on the stretcher, and he's essentially dead, and then you got to push him all the way over the finish line, right? Mm -hmm. So here, the gimmick was you had to get him on the stretcher and strap him down. <laughs> you had to you had to incapacitate him with straps. The way you won this match was by fastening two safety belts. Yes, around a guy. Mm -hmm. So so it wasn't even like you had to incapacitate him. You just had to get lucky that you could you could manage to strap him into the thing before he got off of it, and then. After I'm, after I'm all upset about what a stupid thing it is, that you don't even have to render the guy unconscious, the finish is rendering the guy unconscious. Yeah. That's <laughs> what happened. And then, while I'm on a roll here, I'll let you talk about the match in a second. We just <laughs> saw this on fucking NXT. Eric Young is the number one contender. And Kurt Angle is the champion. Eric Young beats Kurt Angle in a non-title match. Why is it a non-title match if Eric Young is the number one contender and Kurt is the champion? 
as I asked on the NXT report, is a perfectly fair man. I don't have any fucking clue there, and I don't have any fucking idea here either. Now, on top of that, fine. Let's say for some crazy reason, they decided that the number one contender and the champion were going to have a match with the title not on the line. It's preposterous as that idea is. Let's just say that someone came up with that idea, and that's the match. Well, when Eric Young beat Kurt Angle... When the number one contender beat the champion here in this non-title match, Josh Matthews, who you railed on earlier, needs to have some form of credibility. Josh actually asked, and I quote, Will Eric Young get a championship match? You think? I agree 100%. And uh, you're actually, if anything, not being hard enough on them. Because Eric Young wins by destroying the champion, leaving him in uh, 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 helpless, and fastening two safety belts. And he is Alice Snow then explains, and this is a quote: "The top contender just beat the champion in a non-title match." Yes. There was a pause, and then Alice Snow asked, "What does this mean?" <laughs> what the fuck do you think it means? And that was where I declared, "I am too smart for the show." I am way too smart for this show. So the match was fine. It was the 47th match in the show with guys brawling everywhere in and out of the ring using tons of weapons. Eric Young broke out, and this is quoting Josh Matthews, a hard plastic shin guard. He exposed what appeared to be a gladiator costume or something that he bought at Toys R Us, put it on his leg and tried a leg lariat. One of the wackier gimmick shots they ever saw. So yeah, in the end, after a million things, Young hit his pile driver, destroyed Angle, left him laying for dead, and fastened two safety belts in one. And uh, now we have to question what this means. <laughs> what does this mean? You know, many, many years ago, when wrestlers were way more concerned about keeping this business Secret is not the right word. Protecting the business, protecting the secrets of this yeah, business. The secret, they, they called it the secret. Convincing, convincing the fans that what they were watching was real. Back when there was an effort to do this, everything was thought out and thought out and thought out and thought out. And if you were going to do a finish, or you were going to do an angle, or you were going to do whatever, the goal was how can we fool the smartest person? How can we fool the smartest person who may, for example, try to call the hospital and find out if Kurt Angle is there? How do we fool the smartest person in the room who may, I don't know, go to the next town and see if the person who's injured is working on the show, whatever the case might be? How do we fool the smartest person in the room to make sure that people don't figure out this is fake? That was the mindset that there used to be. And then, I don't know what happened, but now the mindset seems to be... Let's write the show for the dumbest person. Let's write the show so the dumbest person isn't confused. I think that's a huge mistake. I think that if, if there were a company that went back to the way that it used to be, I'm not saying the same kind of wrestling or anything like that. You can be as modern as you want. But go back to the way it used to be where you try to fool the smartest guy in the room. And trust me, you ain't fooling anybody by calling the dude Nick instead of Magnus. I'm talking... Think about how could we write this where if this were real, it would make sense, where people can't poke holes in our storylines. If, if company actually did that and everything else they did was modern, but they really just went out of their way to try to make all of their storylines make sense, it would be so awesome. I think it would be the best promotion around, but certainly no one's moving that direction. I shouldn't say nobody. I mean, there are promotions that really do try all righty everybody we have brent here on the air and brent is live from his palatial estate in downtown seattle is that right brent i believe that you're the one with the palatial estate i'm the one with the uh with the small studio but well, actually it's not that small it's yeah it's a, it's a nice one bedroom apartment right across from the amazon headquarters with a 13-story building in front of me so i can't see anything but um yeah, that's where I am. Man, we're already so, off to a great start. And the Amazon start. campus keeps getting larger and larger. 
Uh, so, uh, so the office of uh, Jeff Bezos is probably about three blocks from me. Would you like to say hi, Vinny? Hello, Brent. Hello, Vinny. It's good, it's good to hear from you. It's good to be back on the show. It's been a while. Are you excited to, to hear from Vinny tonight? I am. You sound very, very enthusiastic. Yeah, shouldn't you be getting ready to go to bed? Why are you so enthusiastic right now? Well, uh, you know, I, I'm enthusiastic because I, I appreciate uh, my my fans out there who, uh, you know, uh, you know, have been uh, been supportive of me. I guess there was the, there 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 was a poll set up and, and you know uh, comments made about me. I don't go I don't go on the board that much, but I guess I have a lot of fans on the board, and I won uh, I, I won this this poll as far as um, the, you know wanting somebody to to host a new show. Brent, so, I think you uh, post I, on the board uh, more than I do. <laughs> Tell me, go ahead, Brent. Yeah, you know, I'm quite humbled that, that that people would want would want me uh, to do this, and I'm I am uh, uh, certainly willing to do so if that's something that uh, that you and uh, Dave would allow. So, so there was a there was a poll on the board, and people were asking who should host a show, and and according to you, you won. Do you know how many votes were cast Not here in this? According to me, uh, you, you could go. Uh, you could go and, and look at the board yourself. It's your website. Well, I, I believe you, um, Brent. But but how many people voted in this here poll? Uh, I don't I don't know. I I, I think I had something like uh, I don't know some more of thirty some odd votes, and the next person had like uh, yeah, they were like five behind me, something like that. Uh, I, I think thirty that, uh, thirty some odd I, I think votes. That, you that, say that, that, uh, that Bix did well, as did um, Wang. Yes, you know, and um, um, you know, and then uh, Carl did well. Thirty some odd votes. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, I don't know how many people uh, are on the board, or uh, you know, look at that particular. Um, Look at that that particular what what are the uh, subject topic and and then um, bother to vote. Well, we know there's at least thirty. Sure, uh, but you know you you know much you know, much like the, the Nielsen ratings, it's a sample. <laughs> yes, it is. Brent, the reason I had you on the show tonight was because uh, there there had been a little bit of clamoring for you to come on the show. I, I don't entirely know why. And there were 30 people who voted for you to have a show on the website. And I wanted to, what's the, what's the word, Vinny, when you, when you vet, is it vet somebody? When you check their background and, uh. Kind of like a background check, yeah. I want to, I want to vet him. Google that, Vinny, find out if that's the proper term right here. Well, my, my background check's a little shady. I know, I know, Brent. Mm. But listen. When, when, when one... <laughs> that was the first Brent moment of this whole call. <laughs> it really was. He's trying very hard. Brent, when we make the decisions about adding new shows here on this website, you have to understand that there's a lot that goes into this. We have to... Well, sure. I mean, if I was running, if I was running for office, somebody could scan me for 30 seconds on the internet and say this is not a good candidate. Well, I've done that in terms of you doing a radio show, but since, since people are asking... I thought that it would be good for you to come on this show, Brent, and maybe you could convince me that it is a good idea to give you a show. Now, we can't just like, I think some people think that you could just snap your fingers and do a show, but there's there's a lot to it, Brent. I mean, there there are technological, there, there are technological hurdles that need to be overcome in order for you to do a show. I'm not sure if you're aware of this or not. There are... Yeah, of course, I have... I have um, worked in in uh, radio before, you know. Uh, right, I, a yeah, lot of people have worked in radio, but there, there's more to conference. radio than just talking. I mean, if, if you yeah, were going to do course. a show, I, Brent, I worked, in, I worked in radio. So when I was at the WrestleMania press conference, I was a member of the media at the time, and so I used to be a producer. Is he listening for... to me, Vinny, or what's going on? I don't have any. Brent, traffic. listen to me. Yes, I used to be a producer for a radio program. I worked at a radio station, and so I know about the board. I know about you know not the wrestling board. I know about running running the board uh, at a um, at a radio station for a show. All the technical aspects. I couldn't do any of it. I was scared. Okay, of that's it. the key. So you can't do any of it. How are you going to produce the show, Brent? Do you have a well, board? Well, do you have a I would microphone? Do there is I would. Is that what you? I would like. Uh, 
I would like uh, help schedule guests. I would, you know, write up show topics for the host. I would go and and load and load. I bet I could manage. I could go and and manage to get audio clips of like games and stuff, and I could do interviews and load that in the computer and pick out a few clips and then play on the morning news. But as far as the technical aspects. No, I couldn't. I could not do that. I would have to on your show. I would. I would have to go and have uh, have somebody call me, uh, or uh, or be uh, uh, come out to the uh, uh, come out to the studio. Um, so do you have a car? You know that would probably. You know, I I, I would say you, mean, you have plenty of guests that don't actually go in the studio in order to do a show. So so you could uh, you could call me at home, right? So you want me to add another show where I call you? That's what you're asking. Well, here. this is totally up to you. But, but well, I'm aware of that. But uh, when when um, you know, when the, the uh, like when when Carl uh, does it does the show, when other people do a show, are they are they in the studio? How do they handle it? Uh, Carl has his own recording setup. The Adam okay. and Mike Big oh, Audio yeah, Nightmare. Yeah. They've got their own setup. Okay. The Doc Young show. They got their own setup. All of these shows have their own setup, Brent. I see. You're, you're, so you're essentially, equipment. what you are asking is for me to carve another hour out of my day once a week to talk to you on this uh, and, and make a show out of it, right? That's not what I was asking. This is, this is what the people on the board want. You know, I, I, wasn't, you know, I wouldn't have the chutzpah to, to ask you for a show. It wasn't something that I had, I had even considered. I mean, so the I, thirty I like people you're off. blaming for this. I'm I'm saying that people want me to have a show. I'm quite humble. It wasn't something I even considered. Okay. Uh, so. Um, well, yeah, let's let's if, move on if, past if, if the technical aspects. That, hold on, Brad. You're saying that. Hold I, on, I, hold I on, hold on. To, Let, I let's have to have my own studio. Then, you this know, is not, not a good uh, so preview for a show. The this alternative is a, would be to go out to your studio. He's so doing a poor job of convincing you of anything. Yeah, do you know that an important aspect of being a host is listening, Brent? Hello, this is Brent Kremen, and I'm listening. Okay, thank you. All right, forget all the technical aspects of this. If you were going to do a show, Brent, I need to get a list of potential... Like, what are you thinking about when you... When you consider the idea of doing a show like you must have some ideas it's not just i call yeah, you sure. and we jibber jabber for an hour you must have ideas for a show concept that perhaps you'd like yeah, to pitch well, to me got, here there's got to be a uh, uh either there has to be a format for show when i was working um at the uh you know at the radio station and uh, you know, I wanted to do some producing for, during the week. Uh, you know, even for for non sports programs, I went to the program director and I presented her with like topic ideas. You know, as you you got like this particular station was K I R O Radio in Seattle. Uh, at the time, it was news and sports, and it was sure. on AM. Now, now, now the uh, sports is on the AM. The uh, the news and the talk is on the FM. Uh, so essentially, like the news talk uh, portion of it. I would go and I would submit stories because he got three hours, and so I would provide like three topics, uh, you know, for one for each of those three hours. So, Doesn't seem to be answering uh, my question. Yeah, so uh, that, that I did that. So in this case, um, if you wanted me to do to discuss wrestling, um, you know, I don't. You know, I watch some WWE. There's no way I would sit through those three hours. Uh, you guys get paid. You you. you uh, you deserve every penny that you make for putting up with it with the raw for three hours and all the other wrestling that you watch. So if I was you, uh, you know, Ring of Honor, I don't mind that. I've seen I've seen bits and pieces. I've haven't I have not watched uh, TNA. So, so what you're they, saying, Brent, is you don't watch a lot of wrestling, right? But I'm saying that that could change. I'm saying that that uh, that I would be willing to watch um, watch. Uh, Destination, you know, Destination America's uh, TNA every week. I'd be willing to watch Ring of Honor every week. Do you, do you have uh, Destination and, America? And I would be willing to. Uh, most people don't. You know, to comment on those, but I, I, I cannot do it for free. <laughs> Can because, you hear me? I don't know what's happening. Yeah. Oh, you can't. Okay. I cannot watch the. I cannot watch those shows and discuss them for free because I wouldn't watch them ordinarily. Okay, so what you're asking is, is you want me something. to carve out an hour to interview you on a show where I also pay you to watch professional wrestling? If the t 
topic is professional wrestling, then yes. If the if the if the, if the topic is uh, is other than wrestling, then then no. Yeah, yeah we we could do it. Okay, for okay, okay, okay. So so, give me some ideas of non wrestling topics that you would be willing to to do a show about the Brent Kremen Power Hour. What would this entail? Um. Well, let let's see. Uh, right right now, I, I am. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm interested. Like, I just posted some stuff on my Facebook page in uh, preparation for this, my friends and fans page. So Vinny, I check posted this out. some stuff on, like, the U.S. dollar could possibly collapse. Uh, Ron Paul was on the uh, bank was on the uh, like the banking committee. Ron and, and Paul, for 24 years. So, so there's uh, there's a speech that he gave on that. So you I want have, to come uh, on Brian's web? On, then right on the. Um, <laughs> Like, top, top contributors to Hillary Clinton. Are you on a landline? Sanders. Does it have the top what? part that you put by your ear? Vinny's trying to ask what you a question that? here. Hold on. You're just ranting like a, like a wild man. Hold on a second. Vinny's got a question yes, for you. Vinny, go ahead. So you want to come on WrestlingObserver.com and discuss the potential collapse of the American dollar? Yes. <laughs> now, this is, I'm, I'm not hey. an economics expert. Okay. It was just, it was just something that I, that I read. <laughs> You're not uh, an economics yeah. expert, but, but we should gonna... listen to you talk about it. <laughs> you are the worst I, salesman I, I I've ever heard. And, I could go and comment an article that Ron, that Ron Paul wrote, couldn't I? Uh, you could do whatever you wanted, Brent. I'm looking for more ideas. What All else right, could that, you do that's besides... My, that's my idea is I would just parrot what somebody else is saying. Oh, that sounds like a great show. So so a political <laughs> show. I could go right. and... Um, I, I could go and... Uh, I'm just looking on... You had posted it on this Facebook page. Here's a, here's a little example. Uh, donors to Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Uh, Hillary's uh, So it sounds like he's just posted a bunch are, of articles on his Facebook page. Is that right, Vinny? Yes. Hillary's, <laughs> Hillary's donors are City, City Group, now he's Goldman insane. Sachs, uh, TLA Piper, uh, uh, not Roddy, uh, J.P. Morgan and... J, 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 J. Okay, Morgan who would give a shit yeah. about this is my question. <laughs> Because it's important. Bernie Sanders gets stuff from the unions, gets stuff from United United Workers National Education Association, Community Workers of America, Laborers Union. He doesn't get it from these huge corporations. And and Bernie Sanders' top donor was from a union for ninety five thousand dollars. The uh, Hillary's top donor was from Citigroup for seven hundred eighty two thousand dollars. That's a significant difference. This is very interesting. Okay. So those those are a couple of examples. I could also discuss. Um, the income inequality. I can discuss the NSA and Rand, you know, and, and Rand Paul trying to uh, abolish that. Um, I have, uh, I, as far as uh, you know, as far as wrestling goes, I'd be interested in discussing the Billy Jack Haynes lawsuit. Well, why are we back at wrestling already? I thought we've already, have... did, we've already well, determined it was, it was, it's, it's not going to be a wrestling show, that... Brent. If you get a show, it's going to have anything to do with the wrestling. Because I'm, I'm not paying you to watch wrestling to then talk about it. There's well, got to be. We need something Billy different. Jack Haynes lawsuit without watching current pro wrestling, right? That ain't gonna be much of a show after the first week. All right, I, I watch WWE Network stuff. I, I can, uh, you know, I, I can, I can discuss, um, you know, uh, why don't they have more territories uh, on there? I mean, Vince has went and paid a lot of money for these territories. So what? So nobody watches it. Please, still pay the money. He's just basically making it available. Making it so nobody can see it if he doesn't put it on there, because he has the rights to it and he's not putting it up. It sounds to me, Brent, That'll like topic. It, it sounds to me like the concept that you've got is you just want to talk about whatever's on your mind for the day. Is that right? That that is that is one idea, but I would actually prefer having a co-host. So a I get co-host. ideas off to someone. I think that I would be, I think that I would be better uh, with 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 you uh, or Vinny. Huh. Hosting or 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 Vinny, I'd be you happy say. to host with Wang or somebody oh, Wang. out there, so we could bounce. All ideas right, let's go one at a time. Off First other, off, or I'd be willing to take a format. Okay, if you want to give me a format? That's fine. First off, it's not going to be me. So let's move on to the second choice. Vinny, are you open to the idea of hosting a weekly radio show with Brent Kremen? I am not sure that's something that's going to work out. <laughs> That's very pleasant and polite and political of you, Vinny. I'm doing my best. What That's do you? Fine, I appreciate your candor. Um, <laughs> I, I, there, some people thought that I should host a show with Wang. I could do that. All right. What or do maybe you? Maybe Craig. Have, have you? Have you? Or, have you or, listened? But it be Missy. He listening. That's for sure. Have you listened to Wang on this program? 
Um, yes, I heard him once. You heard him one time. What was he talking about? I thought he was entertaining. He was on the... Uh, Answer the question! On the, he was on the, the, uh, the Brian, Vinny, and Wang show. <laughs> okay, you heard him on the Brian, Vinny, and Wang show. So, so yeah. like, if the two of you did a show together, what do you think you two could talk about? Well, I would have to talk to him and see what topics were of mutual interest. What if there aren't any? <laughs> I don't think there's any topics of mutual we interest between the two some. of you. Because I guarantee you, Wang ain't talking about Rand fucking and, ball. And, and, and maybe even get paid for it. Who knows? <laughs> yeah, let me. I should ask yeah, Wang we, we about his, his ideas Brian. about Rand Paul and the and what what is the currency? What the fuck were you talking about, Brent? What was the other big story? I was talking about what what happens if the U.S. dollar collapses. Okay. Huh. Because because the banks continue to trade in derivatives, we continue to run up massive debt. Okay, shut up for funny. a second. So Missy. This is another option. If if Missy were willing to do a weekly radio show with you, this you think might work? Do I think it would work? Yes, I'm asking you. Well, yes, I think it would work. You guys yeah, would have I, a... you know, I'm a big fan of Missy, and and so we would we would go and we would um, you know we we would you know choose topics together. I would I would give Missy uh, most most of the uh, most of the input because. Uh, you know, uh, she's the celebrity. She's the entertainer. Uh, you know, and, and she's and she's worked in wrestling, so I would I would defer to her as what she uh, what she wants to talk about, and I get out of my wacky remarks. Um, I gotta shut him off for a second. I need a break. Brent, stand by for a minute. I had to mute you. Hell, Vinny, what do you think about this idea? Hey. uh... I mean, I, like I say, uh, th th this is not part of my... Uh... I mean, we got 30 people <laughs> in the world clamoring for Brent to do some sort of show. I can only imagine at least 23 of them have changed their minds in the past, past 20 minutes. And the pitch that he has made to me in the last 19 minutes for a show is is unparalleled in the history of pitches. I'm going to wrap this up. Brent, let's, uh, hey, listen, why don't you plug your Facebook page here, and we'll we'll take all of this into consideration, and, and we'll get back to you. How about that? Yeah. Okay. Uh, if you would like to, to um, you know, uh, take a look at my, my Facebook, be my friend on Facebook, only go to Fans and Friends of Brent Kremen. Fans and Friends of Brent Kremen, because, I, because the, my, my, my personal Facebook page, I use that for people that I personally know. Um, also, um, I, I believe on you can still uh, donate to my life fund on uh, on um, on PayPal this again? because I I certainly have, have have expenses that I need that I need to pay, uh, and uh, I would um, yeah I, I hope that, you know that if I don't get a show that this wasn't my idea that that I can be a regular guest we can at least we can go back to three minutes with Brent Kremen on a on a more regular basis. Uh, you know, you give me. Uh, I forgot about that. You give me topics to discuss, and uh, I, I would be happy to do so. I at least I like like to be on there on a more regular basis. All right, Brent. I want to thank you very much for your appearance here on the show today, and I will take all of that in consideration. Do you remember three minutes with Brent Krem and Vinny? Barely. God, I'd forgotten all about that. Basically, you would ask him a question, he would rant for three minutes, and then you would cut him off mid sentence. Jesus Christ! Why didn't I do that tonight? Is he gone? He's gone. All right. All right. Let's do. You know there are people who have never heard of this Kremen fellow, and they're going to be completely baffled by what occurred. Oh yeah. Hey, into the archives you go, everybody. Into the archives you go. All right. Let's do this. Uh, this impact show live show, by the way, and you would never fucking know it except for the words L I V E in the corner, since no pyro, no ballyhoo, no fanfare. It opens up, and Eric Young's just standing there in the ring, ranting and raving. Mm -hmm. He demands to know who the special ref was, and for a while on the show, I thought we had skipped a week. No. <laughs> it was the last thing we saw was Eric Young beating Kurt Angle by fastening two safety belts. And suddenly here, or not even suddenly, gradually throughout the show, I realized he was getting a title shot tonight with a special ref. So he demands to know who the special ref was, and out came Bully Ray. Yeah. Making his big return with a leather vest over a referee shirt. Crowd actually chanted, welcome back. Very happy to see him. And he confirmed he was a special ref for the, for the uh, championship match tonight. 
And then they abruptly jump straight to video packages. Yeah. No time to waste here on this live show. I guess not. Ethan Carter III came out for a promo. He sucked up to the fans. Said he believed they had the integrity to vote for an arm wrestling match tonight. And then Mr. Anderson came out and demanded to see the results of the fan voting. And Falls Count Anywhere won with 85% of the vote. <laughs> yes, it did. And this means, and this stuns me, 15% actually voted for arm wrestling. You know, there's always going to be trolls, Vinny, that are going to vote for something Apparently. like arm wrestling. I was upset because, for once, they should have just lied. And they should have said it was 99% versus 1%. Because EC3's entire gimmick is he's the one percenter. That's true. And it would have made perfect sense that one percent of the fan base, also one percenters, voted for him. So it was EC3 versus Mr. Anderson in a false count anywhere match, which is essentially a long handicap match with uh, Anderson fighting both heels. And that's sad because Tyrus is no good. Oh my God. We, he was on, uh, EC3 was on the show last week. And uh, he did he did two episodes. One was on Observer Live, which ended up being largely in character, talking about his campaign for the championship. And the other one was uh, out of character. That was the figure four daily. But in the in character one, I was asking him about Tyrus, the the idea that was Tyrus his running mate? If EC3 becomes the champion and something terrible happens and, for example, he dies does Tyrus become the vice as the vice champion? Does he become the champion in the event of such an occurrence? And we're talking about Tyrus, and he said something to the effect of, I prefer if Tyrus doesn't say much. And after watching this show, let's add, do much physically as well. I don't know what Tyrus, God bless the guy. What can this guy do besides look intimidating? Because... They did this spot where I think Tyrus was like supposed to be clotheslined outside or something. You have never seen a man take a slower clothesline over the top rope than Tyrus did here in this match. It was astonishing. And then there was another spot where he got rammed into the post. And again, you never saw a guy going to a post slower than Tyrus did here. And yes, in the middle of a match where these two guys worked their asses off and they were actually having a hell of a match. Yeah. It stood out. So, this hurts my voting, I must say. On uh, Ethan's campaign? This could affect my vote. Mm -hmm. I don't know who the alternatives are, but uh, he needs to choose a better vice champion than Tyrus. So I'm glad you noted, this started off as a hell of a match. Anderson's running wild, destroying both men by himself. Crowd is totally behind him. He's a great babyface. And uh, he starts just yanking chairs out of the ring because it's a false can anywhere match. And the fans love chairs and they're going nuts. And then Ethan cuts him off. And how does he cut him off? Does he hit a low blow? Does he rake the eyes? No. Ethan, in a Falls Count Anywhere match, hits a schoolboy on the ramp. <laughs> Why not? That's the best heel spot I ever saw. <laughs> your, man, your opponent is grabbing chairs to commit violent acts. And rather than commit a violent act yourself, you attempt a wrestling hold. In a Falls Count Anywhere match. Yep. That's awesome. So this was like a great first five minutes to a great 15-minute match, and then Tyrus just beat up Anderson and even pinned him. That pulled the rug out from under things. I was just upset because this was on its way to being way better than anything on Hardcore Justice last week, and then all of a sudden it just ended yeah. due to interference. I mean, yeah. like, literally, it felt like it was just getting going, and then it was over. Yeah. That was sad. It was very sad. We had the exact same thought on this match. Bully and Kurt were all buddy-buddy backstage. Kurt wanted to make sure Ray, Ray would be a fair ref. And Bully asked, do you know who I am? And he walked away. And I took this to mean, fuck no. <laughs> I was confused. Because he's been both a babyface and a heel, and he just came back. Who the fuck knows what he's thinking? I guess. Gail Kim met with Awesome Kong and wanted to make sure they were on the same page. Kong nodded and walked away. We had the Beat Down Clan. It is the clan. For those of you who 
care about such things. It is, no question, the beat down clan. You know what's funny about this is I've been trying to figure this out for a long time. Like, how do we fuck this up so bad? And I think it's because... I think it's because when the Wyatts were running wild, I would always refer to them as the Wyatt clan. And I would get people that would get so upset with me for some reason. I don't even know why. And they would be like, it's not the Wyatt clan. It's the Wyatt family, not the clan. And it very much upset them that I referred to them as the Wyatt clan. So... I, I think I must have just gotten confused, and 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 I must have just thought it's not the beatdown clan; it's got to be the beatdown crew, because it's not clan. I, I I guess I was just like confusing the two things there. But anyway, as soon as I saw that it was in fact for real the beatdown clan, it all of a sudden hit me that remember when they first debuted? I remember they were the beatdown clan now because the beatdown clan in my brain and other people's brain, kept coming out as the beatdown clown. Remember that? We <laughs> talked about this at the time. Like, why would you call them the beatdown clan? Because your your brain turns it into beatdown clown. And I couldn't figure out why they did that. And now I'm remembering all of this. But yes, officially, it's the beatdown clan. And as I've been alerted by many, it's always been the beatdown clan. It was never not the beatdown clan. So... And apparently, this is... Very, very important. Oh, yeah, it's very important information. <laughs> that we get the name of the Beatdown Clan right here in this company that is unlikely to see the end of the year. So, after that downer note, I must say, the entrance they had here, I think they had it last week too, but the entrance stage they have with the rock wall and the offset video screens, that is very cool yeah. and very unique. And the beatdown clan came out in terrifying demon masks. Dude, it's a blatant ripoff. Actually, I can't even say it's a ripoff because Homicide's part of the beatdown clan, but it's Homicide and Eddie Kingston's Outlaw Inc. gimmick from Ring of Honor. That's true. It's exactly the same. These are scarier. Yeah, probably. These scary demon masks are scarier than Homicide and Eddie Kingston's scary clown masks. But yes. So they came out in the scary demon masks, and then MVP cut a quite a promo. He had a lot to say. Talked about politics a lot. Went off on the U.S. government for pillaging oil from other nations. Talked on to other social events and what the word thug meant. He used a word that is not popular in Destination America. Probably popular among people who watch Destination America, but it got bleeped. So the Rising came out. Somewhere in here, by the way, they said homicide had been taken out. He had been ambushed on the streets of the Bronx and his shoulder was hurt. And they accused the Rising of being behind that. The Rising came out and said, we had nothing to do with that. If I were you, I would blame Kenny King. The MVP would not buy this for a second. He went off on the Rising, said he did not care about work rate. He cared about interest rates. <laughs> hey, me too. <laughs> the jibber-jabbered a bit, and both teams started fighting, and they went to break, and when they came back, it was a singles match. Let me tell you something about this uh, this beatdown clan. Did you see the article on the front page of the website, the interview with Micah? I have not read it, but I saw it. Or maybe it wasn't even on the front page. I, I saw it somewhere, but I'd gotten an email or something, and it said, Exclusive interview with TNA's Micah. I've not been watching a lot of TNA of late. And so when I saw that, I thought, who in the fuck is Micah? Is he a production guy? Who is Micah? I thought it was a typo. Turns out there is, in fact, a man in TNA named Micah who has no last name and apparently is supposed to be a badass. You know who Micah is, right? It's uh, Camacho. It's the son of Haku. Yes. <laughs> okay. To be fair... In, in in the article I saw, they spelled it M-I-C-A-H, which is a very biblical name. It's actually spelled M-I-C-A. So, like, there's Haku and there's Micah. If you don't know that, I cannot think of a less intimidating name than Micah. And God bless anybody out there named Micah. But he doesn't even have a last name. He's just Micah. It's The Rising, Drew Galloway, Eli Drake, and Micah. 
Ain't working for me. It needs a better name. So we got MVP versus Drew Galloway. And I enjoyed this, but I had virtually nothing to say about it. They brawled in the ring. They brought out of the ring. And then Drew hit his DDT and won. It was fun. There was nothing to it. So Drew wins. And then Eric Young appears. He whacks Galloway with a chair. And he helped the beatdown clan beat up Drew's buddies. And then Young and MVP had some sort of meeting. Yeah. There's just a lot of talking. Yeah. I did like... Uh, I think it was, it was during this match. There was a... There was a, like a thing that appears on the screen, a graphic, mm -hmm. and it says, need more TNA impact this weekend? And then it goes away, and then another graphic appears, and it reads, tune into Ghost Asylum on Sunday. What? <laughs> this is like Kevin Kelly's swerve on the ROH code line. It kind of was, wasn't it? I mean, maybe it's possible that it was a TNA star that was on Ghost Asylum. That is possible. But if that was the case, maybe it would be of value to tell me who is on Ghost Asylum on Sunday. Yeah. There was no information whatsoever. No. James Storm came out. He had a... Well, he had a giant package. <laughs> yes, he did. He caught out Mickey James... And she was very happy to see him. And he talked about her singing career, how important that was to her. Said she was an amazing friend. And he, uh, well, he presented his package to her. She opened the gift. And it was a fancy-ass custom-painted acoustic guitar. She was very flattered. And he brought in a cameraman to take pictures of the two of them. Oh, God. Everyone was having a good time. And Magnus arrived. He tried to lead Mickey away. James says, wait, I have a gift for you, too. And it was the old Gladiator helmet that Magnus wore when he first showed up from Gladiators. That's right. Yes. Magnus ignored him. Crowd was chanting, put it on. Storm was encouraging them. And finally, Magnus leads Mickey up the aisle. And Storm says, by the way, I got a gift for your son, Donovan, too. It was a little blankie. And he said, you can tell him this is from Uncle James. Did you notice that when he held up the blankie, he was giving the middle finger to Magnus? I missed that. Oh, yeah. And Magnus could take no more, and he returned, and he broke Mickey's new guitar over Storm's head. And he left, and Storm struggled to his feet with a giant smile on his face. And Mickey was pissed off, because that, that was her guitar. That was her guitar. Jeez. Why to her buy her a gift from her friend James? Yeah, I, this is just such a... I love this storyline, but... James Storm is a heel, but everybody's going crazy for the guy. And... They enjoy him. He's so much more entertaining as this guy than as the wacky cult leader. So everybody's cheering him. And then Magnus, who's the baby face, who's in the right, he comes down and everybody boos him because he's ruining the fun. And he's got a gladiator helmet, as noted, and the people are chanting, put it on. And Magnus can't even keep a straight face for all of this. And yes, he broke the guitar like a dick. Storm laughed. I still like it. I'm still entertained. But Mickey should be really pissed off because this guy got her a gift and he's her friend and her husband just broke a guitar over the guy's head for no reason. She hurt. He, he, Magnus hurt her guitar and her friend. Yeah. That was very hard to say. It's not right. MVP confronted Young backstage. Young said the last time they worked together, he ended up as MVP's world champion and they can make that happen again tonight. Young's vest is not working for me. It's not, well, it's a hideous, ugly, sleeveless green military vest anyway. Then he paired it tonight with hot pink gear. <laughs> not a good. By the way, I just got an email from Brent. And keep in mind, one hour ago. We can't escape this man. Literally one hour ago, Brent alerted me that he was tired. I fully expect this email to simply say, I'm watching you. Uh, no, the, the subject line is poll. And he has I'm watching sent your me, poll? He has sent me the poll results. And in fact, he did win the poll with a whopping 32 votes. 32. He thinks this makes a strong claim. Yeah. He's wrong. 
<laughs> about most things. Just want to make that clear. Awesome Kong and Gail Kim versus the Dollhouse. Awesome Kong is one of the best wrestlers I've ever seen who cannot move or bump. Oh, yeah, she's hurting. They protected her totally. And she got in the ring. Like I say, she barely moved. She never left her feet. She did not run. Stayed in the apron the whole time. What she could do looked fine. She still is big and scary. She can still flash an evil smile. She can still do clubbering forearms. And she finally hit an implant buster. It was the first time she left her feet. It took her forever to get back up. And somewhere in the melee here, the evil girls had the numbers advantage and pinned Gale. And the baby faces immediately hit Marty Bell with their finishers, just to make sure the win didn't mean anything. And uh, once again, Kong had to struggle to her feet. Yeah, watching Kong try and get back to her feet is just, like, sad. She's, she's, I mean, I love the heel Terran character. I think it's awesome. But she ain't very good in the ring. And the dollhouse girls look kind of green. And Kong could barely move. And essentially, this was a one-person show with Gail Kim. Yeah. And she was great. And Kong killed Marty with the implant buster afterwards. And I mean, honest to God, for a match with two green girls, a girl who's not very good, and a girl who's hurt, and one good girl, this was a miracle. That's true. Yeah. That's all very true. They show the Hardys winning the tag titles, and then they show Jeff Hardy breaking his leg in his dirt bike. Yeah. In slow-mo. With a bleeped swear word by Matt as he hit the deck. Magnus and Mickey had a confrontation backstage. She was upset with him because he had disrespected her. Well, he had. Which is true. He did not. He, he. James Storm had a Mother's Day gift for her and was being so nice, and her idiot husband had to come out and fuck everything up. So uh, Matt Hardy came out with the tag belts. He simply said that the Jeff Hardy who appeared on TNA Wrestling was not a character or a gimmick. He was that weird all the time. <laughs> and Matt had to live with that. Yeah. So due to Jeff's injury and against Matt's wishes, they were forced to relinquish the tag belts. He laid them down on the mat and said it was time to go home and figure out what was, what was next for him. Listen, I don't know if um, Billy Corgan... I know he follows wrestling very, very closely. I don't think he's listening right now. But if he is, let me just throw out one little piece of advice. When I watched this, it came off to me like Matt is turning heel. Matt comes out. He says he's learned that Jeff does what he does, and Matt just has to deal with it. And it sounded like he was all angry with his brother for his being selfish right when they won the titles. This wasn't supposed to be a transitional reign or like a novelty reign or nostalgia reign. It was supposed to be a real legit reign and his brother fucked the whole thing up for him by being an idiot on his goddamn bicycle. So he's mad. It never works. Those two men feuding with each other, it never works. They've tried. I think this will be the third time that they've tried to make this work. It may be the fourth. It has failed every time single time so if anybody has the idea of breaking these guys up and having them feud let me tell you right now it ain't gonna work so let's go somewhere else well said well said so as matt was leaving he passed austin aries and bobby rude who are now a tag team who call themselves the dirty heels yeah i am not making that up and i think they're baby faces by the end of this, they sure were. <laughs> they were to me. They were fi clean fighting baby faces. Yeah. <laughs> so, Aries noted the last time he was on Impact, he had been sent, uh, I think he said stretched out, but the point was he was taken out by an Eric Young pile driver. He vowed he would get revenge on Eric Young, but he had promised not to do so until Kurt Angle was done with him. He made that promise to Kurt. So. Noble man. Yes. Not, A noble dirty heel. <laughs> not dirty nor heelish. So you notice the tag belts were cursed. Whoever held them seemed to inevitably, inevitably get injured. And he said he and Rude were former world champions and also former tag team champions. And when they were tag team champions, they did not get hurt. They simply fought the best challengers every single week. 
They said uh, the tag belts deserve to be held by two great wrestlers like them. Davey Richards came out, said Rude and Aries were not the best team in the world. They went back and forth for a while, and finally Davey brought out Eddie Edwards. Eddie noted his heel was better. He had been clear to wrestle that afternoon. He challenged the uh, Dirty Heels to a best of five series of the tag belts. And the Dirty Heels accepted this challenge to a fair fight and then nobly shook their opponent's hands. Yeah. And uh, this wasn't bad. In fact, you know, the end result's good. These are going to be good matches. I'm happy about that. But it, w- it was four guys all dressed exactly the same in the ring having a promo, except that the Wolves had those stupid ties on. What I got out of this is, is first off, and we mentioned this when it happened, Eddie Edwards broke his foot, right? Uh, heel. But, yeah, his yeah. heel. And so they already had months worth of television in the bag. So the big question was, why even bother stripping the guy? Because if you don't, he's only going to be out of action for a short period of time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Essentially what happened was, I think he broke his heel in like, it may have been March. Uh, it may have even been February. But they didn't strip him on television until the first week of April. One month ago. And now he's back good as new. Clear to wrestle. Everything's fine. The good news is... Well, I'll do one more thing of bad news. This came off as a total ripoff of Lucha Underground. I just saw Best of Five series. I was waiting for Dixie to come out and say that the winner was going to get a special opportunity. The good news is, this will be great television. We have five weeks of great television coming because this feud, this best of five, should be great. Which I guess would be four. Three? What? No, five matches, yeah. Yes, best of five. Let's see. Uh, Matt Hardy was about to leave when Galloway stopped him. I mean, someone could win three straight. I suppose it's possible. Want to split the difference and say four? No. So Galloway, as best I could tell, tried to recruit Hardy. He said guys like them didn't run away from a fight or something. Matt seemed confused. Angelina Love was in the ring talking about questions people were asking her on social media. All right, I got to talk about this. One of the things that I hate about social media always being mentioned in wrestling is that Angelina Love is in there talking about all of the stuff that people are saying on social media. So that to me means that they are are expecting that their viewers are following these people on social media, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So... Angelina, on a live show, mind you, this was not taped months ago, Angelina is in the ring talking about her social media accounts. Have you been on her social media accounts over the last week? Can't say that I have. Well, let me tell you what it's all about. Her and Davey Richards are engaged to be married. All All over all of their social media accounts. How about that? A story that in no way has anything to do with what's going on in TNA. There's no mention anywhere on this show of Angelina Love and Davey Richards one, by the way, is a baby face. One, by the way, is a heel. No mention whatsoever. That part of the story, that that, that, that does not exist in the TNA universe and storyline. But apparently all of the other stuff on her social media does exist in storyline. It's just a disconnect to me. Like, I don't know. I, I don't even know what to do. Like, if, if you're a wrestler and your company is always going to be talking about your social media, then you shouldn't ever put anything on there that doesn't play into the storylines of the television shows. You know what I mean? Just have, if you're Vincent Verhey and you're Big Vinny V on television, then just have a fucking Big Vinny V account and a Vincent Verhey account. Sure. And on your Big Vinny V account, you only do storyline shit. Otherwise, it's just weird. Let's just talk about her social media. And I'm sitting here waiting for her to talk about how her and Davey are engaged. No mention. Not one mention of it. Anyway. You're correct. Here is a tweet from Davey Richards about moving in with Angelina and unpacking all the supplements. Yep. Well, there you go, then. Well, good for them. I hope they're happy. So, she's cutting this promo about how she's the only beautiful person in existence and the greatest knockout ever when who should appear in the crowd but Velvet Sky? Yes. 
In a bizarre twist of fate, back on the show the same day Bully Ray is back on the show. <laughs> yeah. Right. Crazy. Wrestling is amazing. So, Not really. Yeah. So Velvet got a makeover of sorts. She dyed her hair some funky colors, got new tattoos. Joined the Aces and Eights. Joined the Aces and Eights. Wore a bunch of denim. Yeah. So she got in the ring very stone-faced, and this turned into Stone Cold Velvet Sky. That's right. A money, a money (laughs) storyline. So first Angelina tried to bury her. Then she tried to act like they were friends. Then she got mad at Velvet for not being her friend. And a completely unbelievable turn of events this was. Yeah, and Velvet just stood there the entire time, and finally Velvet speared her and then attempted to choke her with her own hair. This looked way too complicated for her to do. Yeah. And security geeks led her away, and I was in a good mood. I just wrote, this wasn't very good. No. Hey, it's a big return. That's about all I can say about can't, it. Can't win them all. Eric, I'll, I'll, I'll tie in more than I have to say about this, but let's get into the main event because it, it it ties into it. Okay. Uh, Eric Young confronted Bully Ray backstage, asked if he would be a, be a fair ref. Ray said he was going to call it loose. They could kill each other for all he cared. He was just there to raise someone's hand at the end. Yeah. So in the main event, Eric Young versus Kurt Angle for the world title with Bully Ray as a special ref. And the beatdown clan came out to watch. And Angle rolled outside. And Ray was yelling at the beatdown clan, don't interfere, when Eric Young kicked Bully Ray in the balls. That would count in my book as interference. So the ref is down. The beatdown clan start beating up Kurt. Out come the Rising and Chris Melendez. Okay. Now... Again, I have not watched every single episode of Impact. We're just now getting back into it. We miss a week every now and then. But I am pretty confident that Chris Melendez has not been on Impact since February. It is now May. Maybe he made some mystery appearance I don't know about, but as far as Impact Television, I think this was his first appearance back since one random battle royal in February. Why was he back? Yeah, this is not a big return. What the hell? It, it, it's it's. I don't want to feel like I'm I'm ranking on the show or anything like that. It was actually a, a pretty good show, but it's all these little things like why do they always have people randomly come back for absolutely no reason? Why the fuck is Chris Melendez just randomly back for no reason? He hasn't been seen. He hasn't been on television. He's just randomly back helping the guy. It's just like the return, the random return of Bully Ray. Bully Ray is not re-signed. Oh, really? No. Hmm. Bully Ray, in fact, you may not know this, Vinny. Speaking of social media, which TNA is pushing that we should all be following all these people, if you were following Bully Ray on social media, you probably saw the tweets that he sent out over the weekend essentially trying to get a job back with WWE. Tweeting all their guys. Fans are asking when he's going to be back in WWE, and he's going, you need to ask them. That's what he's doing. So yeah, he just randomly came back for a television show. He may never be back again. We got a random appearance by Chris Melendez. We got the re- I, th- I think at least Velvet's probably going to be back regularly. I don't know what the hell she's going to be doing, but uh, just th- there's always all these random returns for no reason. I like that of all the people to make a random return. I know he's not a huge star, but appearing out of thin air for no reason is the one-legged combat vet. Yeah. <laughs> he's not getting any kind of platform for his turn at all. He just shows up. Did I did I miss a segment with him and Kurt Angle somewhere? Did I did I miss some sort of storyline? Why is Chris Melendez back? What the hell does this have to do with anything? And It was a useless return. It was a completely useless return. They made him significantly less than just a guy. So everyone brawled to the back. It was now down to Kurt, Eric, and Buddy Ray, who was now selling his balls. Oh, he sold his balls all the way to the back at the end of the show. God bless him. He's a hell of a ball seller. Mm -hmm. So Eric Young grabbed this man and attempted to pile drive him. And Bully Ray backdropped his way free. 
And then Kurt Angle hit Young with a uh, angle slam and made a cover. And Bully Ray then attempted to count the pin and then stopped counting when Young kicked out. <laughs> He's a. He said he was going to do it by the numbers. And he did. He is pure of heart. Yes. He's going to be fair to this man who kicked him in the balls and attempted to, dro to drop him on his head. And then Young hit Angle with a pile driver and Ray just made another count and Angle kicked out. I don't want to. I don't want to nitpick, but. When you have the history of neck injuries that Kurt Angle has, a pile driver should be a finish. That's not even a nitpick, actually. That's a statement of fact. It's really just a move to be avoided in general. I, 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 I trust Eric Young immensely. I don't think I, 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 it's nothing to do with the safety of it. Yeah. I mean, it was as safe as can be, but this guy had a broken freaking neck. Many of them. Yeah. And, 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 and Eric you only Young, have one neck to break, breaking many of them is quite a feat. And, and granted, it was it was on the steel steps to put, uh, I guess, Aries out of action. But, I mean, if your pile driver has put people out of action and you give Kurt Angle with a broken fucking neck a, a pile driver, this guy should be pinned and out of action. He's kicked out. So they just kept wrestling and Ray just kept reffing. And finally, Angle caught Young in the ankle lock and Young tapped out. And that was that. Well, I'm going to I'm going to be fair and then I'm going to point out why this is not a good argument. We don't know if Bully Ray is coming back. And so, you don't really want to build a finish over Billy Ray or Bully Ray choosing one guy over the other or, or Billy being Ray, involved <laughs> or Billy Ray or or choosing one guy over the other or helping one guy win or being involved in the finish in any sort of way because you may never see the guy again. So it it uh, if you don't know if the guy is ever going to come back, then your best course of action is to not have him involved in the finish in any way. Now, with that said, if you don't know if the guy is ever coming back, don't put him in this position. Don't have the heel hit him in the nuts. Yeah. Just have him be a ref. Yep. This is a good show. I, it was it was a good show. It was not a bad show. There it's are just nitpicky details here that will, they will always be TNA. Always little things. And of course, to be fair, I mean, same thing with Raw. Oh, this is much better than Raw. Oh, yeah. The Raw Go Home shows tomorrow, by the way, everybody, for those of you that are uh, fascinated by this uh, payback show. Daniel Bryan's going to be on the show, and we'll see what that means. Yeah. Because, I don't know. There, There's some rumors that he's good to go, but there's also rumors that tomorrow was the day that he was going to vacate the title. And if you put a gun to my head, I would predict that tomorrow he is going to go in there and he's going to vacate the title. But I guess we'll see. One last note on Impact. Yes. The announcer for this show was Josh Matthews by himself. Oh, yeah. Hell of a job. Yeah. He, he is a great announced team. Right now, if you're ranking the announced teams in North America, it's Matt Stryker and Vampiro at the top. And then Josh Matthews by himself. Yeah, he wasn't bad. I didn't think he was all that good. I wasn't, like, blown away by him. Apparently, the first day that he did commentary all by himself, he was excellent. Uh, this one, he was just kind of like, I don't know. He was fine. And and listen, that's not even, like, a negative because, let me tell you something right now. Doing two hours of anything, talking all by yourself, is not easy. Especially when it's when it's calling action or, or the idea of trying to do a, a two-hour radio show. I know that... Um, I know you you ranted about uh, Rush Limbaugh the other day and how it was the eighth circle of hell that you would have a reality show well, to choose the next Rush Limbaugh. It was a reality eighth circle of hell to have 15 people pretending to be Rush Limbaugh. Sure. Yeah. But uh, one thing about the guy, whatever you think about the guy, I will tell you this about him. One of the gimmicks of his show is he goes three hours and he never has guests. He goes there every day. And he gets behind the microphone and he just rants like a madman for three fucking hours. And occasionally takes a call and not very often. I mean, I'm not a big Rush Limbaugh fan, but Jesus Christ, that is extremely impressive to have the ability to be able to go there and just talk. <laughs> TNA this week, I would say it was good. The Dollhouse Act, I don't know, I mean, it's a weird act, um, but it had so much heat for no reason, so I think it was. It must be pretty darn effective. And Taryn Terrell was, was, was absolutely great. Taryn is the best. I mean, I 
I was not not in the uh, ring, but as a character. I was not at all, you know, looking forward to Taryn Terrell as a heel. I, you know, one bit, but she is. They got a role. <laughs> they got great. a role for yeah. She she is really good. Just the, the her um, I don't know what it is. Her her like sort of like um, that's the condescending. You know, she she, she the she's really good and believable in in the way she plays her role. I mean, when I was reading about oh, you know, she's doing this and this and with, you know. Um, the you know with Rob, you know Sh Chef Robert Irvine and everything like that. It's like ah oh, God, another one of those things. And I don't think they should be doing both of those on the same thing. And last week it wasn't as good, but man, she was really when she was out there with Gail Kim and Gail Kim starts beating her up. Those people were so behind it. They because sh she like she was just great. That's all I could say. She's out there with her with her negligee on and saying she's going to the to 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 meet up with chef robert and i'll bet you all those women are going like oh my fucking god somebody beat the hell out of this woman i mean it was like it's like hitting them like for real and gail comes out there and starts attacking her and it was it was really good you know talking about meeting her her stepdaughters and I'm going to go, this is what I'm going to wear when I meet your husband and everything. And I was like, and she comes out, you've gone too far this time. It was, it was pretty good. I'm not sure I'm sold on the other two, but as far as like, it's a weird, creepy act and they got good, uh, they got the rights to like real music that, uh, you know, that song, the doll song, whatever it's called. Um, I forget the name of the song. I know the song, but they got like real music and everything. So that was good. Um, the hardcore match at the end, it was a 10-man tag. It was Team Angle against Team Eric Young. And, uh, you know, it was a weapons match. Kind of that overdone stuff, but it wasn't bad. And they they did, like, a little tease at one point because it was... Uh, the babyface team was, like, Kurt Angle, Chris Melendez, um, two members of the Rising, and Bobby Lashley's the fifth guy. So Drew Galloway had to go backstage with... Um, with Micah and Eli and just goes, we only got two spots. So I'm picking Micah and Eli just sort of looks and goes, mm. so it's like, it's so subtle, but I like it because you know, it, it's, it's going somewhere. I mean, that, that, that's good writing. Um, so that was pretty cool. I mean, just those little teases like that. Um, Edwards and Richards against, uh, Austin Aries and Bobby Roode not as good as I expected I had been told that the second one was the real good one so that'd be the one that airs god damn I hope it's not next week because <laughs> if it is that would be a problem <laughs> if it is yeah we won't see it but you'll um, have to go to I don't know Africa where do they have TV out of this country challenge challenge TV it's from what I understand it's probably going to air in, in uh, Canada Mm. The Fight Network is under the the assumption that they're not getting the three-hour show. They're getting the two-hour show, and they're getting the real show. But, um, yeah, the match was, was the match was technically good. Those four guys, when it comes to just wrestling, they're really good. But it was – and, you know, it wasn't like there was nothing wrong with it. It was just um, – you know, you, I just think that when you see those four, you go, man, these guys can have a killer match. But they had eight minutes, and they never really – got it all the way i mean they got it to a degree it was good but but not like it, it was nothing like oh my god what a great match i heard the second match of the four was a great match so that's whenever that one airs probably two weeks um and uh what else um ethan carter was pretty funny when uh he was he was getting mad at the ratings it was like he was like uh he was like like a ufc fighter you know going like Last week, I won, and Eric Young lost, but he's ranked number one, and I'm ranked number two. I mean, who does these ratings? And I don't know who does the ratings, but but that was his gripe. And he did a pretty cool thing with um, Anderson, because Ken Anderson wanted to rematch, and he was just like, you know, I'm long past you. And finally, uh, you know, Ken Anderson started calling Tyrus a big bitch. His bitch, his bitch, your bitch, you're a bitch. So Tyrus got so mad that he accepted. And I guess by virtue of Tyrus accepting that if he lost, which in fact he did, then Ken Anderson has to wrestle EC3 again, even though EC3 said that he has no intention of wrestling him again. Now he has to. So they're going to wrestle another time. And 
um, James Storm. So the Revolution guys all destroy uh, Magnus. Uh, just beat the hell out of him with a stick and all the other stuff. And then James Storm starts yelling at them, why did you do this? And it's like, we were doing it because, you know, he hit you with the guitar and everything. And he was just like, I didn't tell you to do this. This is me and Mickey James, between me and Mickey James. Don't you ever do this again. So, you know, they're doing this thing where maybe you think that James isn't such a bad guy or something. So, even though he is. So, but, you know, I mean, for the most part, um, good. There was a really weird thing in the, um, which match was in the, the Ethan Carter Tyrus match. I mean, in the uh, Anderson Tyrus match, where Josh Matthews, for one match, was a heel announcer. It was just bizarre. He, that sounds I exciting. Mean, I mean, it's like he just turned heel and he starts yelling about how um, Ethan had interfered and the referee kicked Ethan out and he's always oh, going on and on. It's so unfair to kick Ethan out. And it's like, you're, you're, this makes no sense. And he starts going like, you know, Ethan's, you know, you know, like he starts, you know, it's just not fair that they kicked him out. And, and anyway, from the next match on, he was back to being Josh. I don't know what it was. It was, it was weird. And let's see, they announced the live taping on June 28th, which is a Friday. So that is not happening. And uh, they did have a couple of mentions of the move to Wednesday. Uh, they really only had one commercial that mentioned it, but, but, um, and then, but there was a graphic on the screen, at least once in the show that nobody would have noticed, but it was there. Sounds like a hell of a job. But nothing to announce next week's a three hour show. So nobody is going to know to tune in at, at eight o'clock instead of nine o'clock. So the, even though the rating was going to be real low that first hour, because even if they told people, most would forget the reality is, is that they didn't tell anyone anyway. Well, I don't know what to add to that. Let's talk about MMA. Are you writing a book? <laughs> Not yet. Okay. Well, I'm tr it, trying to avoid it at all costs, but... It won't sell as well. No, it won't. That's that's the main reason. But I'm not. By the way, I'm not insinuating that they're going out of business. I'm just, no, of course I'm just, not, everybody. I'm just joking that Brian maybe should be writing a book. Hey, listen, whether it goes out of business or not, a great book could be written about TNA. Oh, my God. The it's stories that... that could be told about TNA. It wouldn't be as good as WCW, though. No, no way. No, it would be a different kind of insanity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I can help you a lot with, with, with the last couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, it's just, it's, it's just, it's just, it's just crazy. It's, it's, um... It's still ongoing. I don't know. I don't know. Just the decisions, you know, every, you know, I mean, there's, there's the whole office and everything like that. It's just weird. Although again, like people are raving about Billy Corgan. So that seems like a decent hire, but geez, Dixie, I don't know. Oh, well. <laughs> Stuff going on around TNA is something else here today. Never seen so many meltdowns all over the internet. Why is everyone mad at Dave? Uh, you know the old saying, don't shoot the messenger? Exactly. Well, they are. They're shooting the messenger. Like, if TNA is, if they've lost their television deal and they're going out or whatever, and I don't even know if they're going out of business... Half of the people on the internet crying about this story didn't even read Dave's story. Of course not. Nor apparently did they listen to Wrestling Observer Live today when I talked about it for free, for crying out loud. You could have listened for free, and you would have heard that Discovery announced internally that they were canceling Impact as of the end of September. Now, TNA has since been moved to Wednesdays. So... It's possible that the Wednesday ratings will be great. And then they will decide not to cancel the show. But as of right now, the show is canceled. This is a fact. It's not anything that anybody made up. Dave, as he noted on the board, he's got all of the emails between himself and Dixie that he's gone back and forth with for the last two weeks. I heard this story two weeks ago. 
I even saw the email from, from Inside Discovery. Nobody is making anything up. Why you would be mad at Dave or me or anybody? Like, if, if the thing goes under, you know you should be mad at is Dixie or whoever. But not me, not Dave, not the Observer. I just don't understand why people are so out of their minds. Like, I guess you got to look to blame somebody when things go awry. Well, the latest is is Eric Young. Did you see Eric Young's tweet? I was just reading that. He's very, he called Dave a loser. Man, he called him a loser. He didn't even call him by name, mind you. Oh, of course not. Yeah, uh, let me find it here. Although, well, uh, let me actually look up his Twitter, because I don't know if somebody photoshopped that or if he actually tweeted this. I'm a big fan of, uh, no, he didn't actually do the picture. I'm a big fan uh, yeah. of Eric Young as a wrestler. Seems like a nice enough guy. But he writes here, so it turns out people that, quote, write wrestling news for the internet are not right and don't bother checking facts. Sad, sad, sad losers. Now, what facts do you think Eric Young checked out here? Uh, called Dixie. Oh, really? Hmm. That's my guess. Wow. Well, if that's his fact checking, if I were Eric Young, just to be a friendly guy here, I would recommend that he takes this tweet down. In fact, I'd recommend a lot of people take tweets down because there's a very good possibility that in a few months, a lot of people are going to look really dumb. You don't think I've been through this before when ECW was going down and WCW was going down and all of the wrestlers were talking about how we were wrong. And we were making up stories. Why the fuck would anyone make up a story about Destination America passing around an internal email talking about how the show was being canceled? Why would we make that up? Why? <laughs> like, why? Anyway, it was a funny day today. It was a funny day. Sad day. I mean, I feel bad for, for a lot of people in TNA. I talked to people today. I mean, trust me. Plenty of people are looking at this in a realistic way, unlike others who are, who are, anyway, why the fuck am I wasting my time with this? I don't know. So we should talk a little bit about TNA here. I don't know if uh, you've been following the story. Are you aware that they have been, uh, uh, they're not being renewed by uh, Destination America slash Discovery? Um, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, whatever with the story, it's like, you know, they, they just came off so bad. I mean, here's the deal. They knew, or at least Dixie knew, you know, for a week, maybe longer. I don't know when she knew, but I knew she knew, I knew she knew, um, the, you know, everything in the Observer article is what it was. I know she knew by Tuesday, okay? Um, and they could have done, you know, gotten ahead of the story. They could have, you know, whatever they wanted to do, told people ahead of time. Because she knew it was going to come out. I mean, it was, you know, I, I you know, as soon as, as soon as I knew, I went to her and I just said, you know, What's this? Is, you know, what's the story? Tell me. What's your? You know. What's the deal? She didn't get back to me, so gave her some. Gave her a couple days. Got more confirmation on the story, and uh, came out. And it's like, and then, and, 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 and it wasn't. That wasn't. And again, and I, I contacted her again. The same thing. So I mean, then they. You know. I mean, the whole thing. Even before the second one. They, ah, it's just ridiculous. They, they had their chance, um, you know, their whatever. Um, I mean, here, here, you know, again, the memo, there was there was a memo, okay? It, it's like, it's not like some guess. It's not like some speculation. There is a chance, and I hope, I, you know, as, as much as that promotion was absolutely incompetent this week, and especially in the last couple of days, um, on the handling of this story. Um, I mean, can you imagine, like, going out there with this, like, threatening lawsuits and stuff? I mean, this is just, like, ridiculous. I mean, for something that's black and white, and they know, and they know it's right. Now, granted, there may be people somewhere who wrote stuff that, that wasn't true. 
I don't know. I didn't read anything. Okay. And they certainly, like all these people, I mean, whatever they said, you know, they, they send this release to everyone. Guess who they don't send this release to? Me. They didn't send it to you, did, you, did they? I didn't get it. Of course not. Of course not. So it's just like, um, you know, and, and, and the whole, what, what, you know, cancel versus renew. Okay. I, I, I got to talk about this. <laughs> okay. Because here, here's, I mean, you can, they're, they're the same thing anyway. So, so it's like, it's, I mean, the whole, the whole argument is just ludicrous to begin with. However, I do want to say this, that the, the, the wording that they used at the Discovery Network was, we will not be renewing. That's right. Okay? That is the wording. I know I wrote cancel and I'll tell you why I wrote cancel. And it's the same thing anyway. And in the television world, by the way, those, those words are used interchangeably all the time. You can look in. When I Googled it. The what? very first headline that came up used the words not renewed and canceled interchangeably in the same headline. In the, the television first... industry, those yes. words are interchangeable, okay? And I've known that. But the reason I used the word canceled, okay, and not, not renewed is because they signed, if you remember, do you remember when they announced this deal? This deal was announced as a multi-year deal. Now, as I said, and this is before the story came out, I mean, people were asking, you know, before this ever came out, and they're going like, uh, you know, can can they get out of the deal? And I said, you can always in television get out of a deal, and the deal point, the point that they could get out is in September, okay? But that is not not renewing. I mean, I guess you could say they're not renewed for the fall season, but it's not not renewing the contract. It's canceling the contract. If it was a multi-year contract, and at the nine-month level, you are, uh, you know, nixing it because you have the option to do so. Okay, you can say, well, we didn't renew the option. But you, when you announce it as a multi-year contract and at nine months, that is a cancellation. But you know what? It's also a... <laughs> at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because whatever terminology you want to use, it's the same thing. Yeah, yeah, I know it's the same thing. But I mean, even but I mean, even like the whole thing of no, we weren't. It's like yes, you were because it was a multi-year contract. So anyway, that's that. But um, the other the other thing as far as that goes, like they, you know, I, I expect, you know, and I mean, they're certainly hinting that starting on Friday and maybe even quicker on through social media, they're going to try to rally their fans, and they should, you know, write letters. You know, nothing's set in stone in the television industry. I mean, in the sense of, is it, I mean, there have been TV shows canceled before that, that fan pressure is brought back. And I mean, people are going like, oh, if it, what, what happens in September? You know, they can prove you wrong. It's like, no, the memo is right. And I even wrote in the story, this is the other thing that bothers me. I covered that in the story. I said, you know what? This game is still in play. They, yes, you, know, you did. I mean, it's like I covered every base in that story. And I mean, uh, you know, look, I know no, no intelligent people are knocking the story, and most have been praising me and and all that. Um, you know, I mean, and the people who have knocked it either, you know, most didn't read it, and the ones who, you know, who, who knocked it and read it, you know, are just either, you know, they have no reading comprehension or they just, I don't know what to say. You know, I don't even know what to say about them. And, and, and you know, again, I mean, the number of people who, who actually read the story that complained to me is like, I'm not saying there was none, but boy, there weren't many. Um, so I shouldn't really get mad about it. I'm, you know, again, I'm not mad at the TNA fan base. I was amused by them, and I was having fun with them and all that. And, oh, you know, why is he responding? It's like, I had fun, and people had fun reading it, okay? I, you know, whatever. That's fine. It was it was amusing and, and all that, and maybe I was... You know, sorry, I thought of some funny lines from time to time. It was a, a, one of those days. Um, that's what I do when things like that happen. I try to make humor out of it. Okay, so anyway, but the people in the company made a lot of mistakes. Um, I can tell you that there is a television station that um, could have had interest in them. I mean, one of the executives from that station, I mean, he, you know, he contacted me and said, who would ever, you know what I mean? After the last two, it was, it was, I think the wording was after the last two days, you know, anyone who's followed this story, who would ever want to do business with these people? And, and, and you know, again, I didn't think of it that way, but not now, 
just just Brian, put yourself in the shoes. I am a television executive, half ass thinking maybe pro wrestling, right? Maybe I'll do pro wrestling. And just say that you happen to be a reader of our site, and many television executives are. Okay, and these people are so stupid that they don't even understand that. And you watch how this whole thing went down with the TNA side. And it's, you know, this is, you know, now Dixie kept her mouth shut, so that, that's good. But, but no, you know what, though? But they still did that, that stupid lawsuit thing, which made them look so bad. Okay. But, okay, think about this, okay? And think about, again, how they lost Spike. Okay, and you, if you, like, look at that. I mean, how did you lose Spike? And then this, it's like, if you look at it again, because their ratings aren't that bad. In fact, their, their ratings were, were very good on that station. I mean, it's, it's, you know, there's the handicap of wrestling, and it's hard to sell ad time um, and all that, um, which, which, is, which is tough. And, you know, but uh, again, there are, there are stations, and Spike being one of them, you know, but they lost Spike. But there are other stations out there where if, you, if you're doing mixed martial arts, Okay, if you've got mixed martial arts or you've got maybe even kickboxing, maybe boxing, let's stretch, but certainly mixed martial arts. If you are a station and you've got mixed martial arts, and many stations do, Access has it, uh, NBC Sports has it, um, CBS Sports has it, um, although CBS Sports isn't spending much, you know, for stuff. But I mean, these are the stations that, you know, TNA, maybe Fox Sports, uh, Fox FS2. Is another one. These stations, they're, you know, I don't know if FS, well, I, you know, FS2's talk to Jeff. So, you know, I mean, I, I don't know that they want it, but they're not so adverse that they wouldn't talk to Jeff. So we're talking about these different stations. If they go and look, you know, there, there is the value that you can get these wrestling fans and you can promote your other stuff. And we already know that wrestling fans will watch MMA, not all of them, but a lot of them, enough to, enough to where you're going to help your MMA property. Without a doubt, I mean that's a proven that is a proven fact that if you have a wrestling show and you promote your MMA property with a wrestling show, it will help your MMA ratings. And so there's there is a logical you know Destination America didn't have that, so it wasn't as valuable. Those Alaska shows and all the the ghost shows and all that they tried to promote them off of wrestling, but I don't know that it's really effective. Um, certainly not like an MMA show would be. So. Um, when you've got those, if you've got any of those stations and they look at this, they're going to go, you know what, who, you know, yeah, the ratings aren't too bad. And yeah, there's an upside, but who would want to deal with them? Now, somebody may, somebody may, and I hope, I hope they sign a deal. I hope, I hope that Discovery changes their mind. I do, you know, and they were, you know, and people go, oh, he was wrong. He was wrong. You know, whatever. I don't care. I hope that they change their mind because I don't want to see them go out of business and I don't want to see the guys lose jobs. And I'm entertained by their show the last couple of weeks, too. You know, last couple of months. Um, it's sad to watch, but this week was so sad. And, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm mad at them, not because of what they've said about me at all. I'm mad at them for being so fucking stupid. And I mean, again, the stuff I'm saying is like, how smart do you have to be to think? You know, just freaking, you had a week, you guys had a week to tell the story that you wanted before it was going to break most likely. Maybe not. Maybe not. Who knows? Because who knows when I was going to get confirmation uh, and more and I was going to go with it. I, you know, again, and it might have happened sooner. I mean, like when I first found out, I mean, it's like, you know, maybe someone's going to, someone's going to get it first, you know. But, I, you know, again, I, whatever. Um, you don't know it's coming out. You know it's coming out soon. You know it's coming out pretty damn soon. And what do you do? You, you, you start this campaign, attack the messenger. You know, that's, that's, that's fine for your, you know, your, you know, your, your people, you know, again, and it's so few people that's for this tiny number of people you can create that Dave Meltzer is the enemy who wants to see this thing die, which is of course, anyone with a brain knows the, the opposite is true, but they're willing to, to feed that because it's the only for what, for two days of before it comes out anyway. I mean, everyone knows the story now. Everyone knows that. You know, and then, I mean, I wrote the way I wrote, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just so mad at them 
for their own stupidity, not for me, because I don't really care. I actually, you know, I mean, I was actually very entertained and amused by all, you know, I, I wasn't mad at those TNA crazy fans. I was, you know, I was having fun and all that. Um, I wasn't mad at Billy Corgan, although that was just really just embarrassing. It was completely embarrassing. And then now I've learned about Billy Corgan. You know, it's like, I didn't know that he was so hated in the music industry. And it wasn't, you know, now I do because people in the music industry were telling me. Great, wonderful, but whatever. I mean, I, you know, I mean, who cares? Who cares in the music industry anyway? Um, you know, but it's 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 like you're doing. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to look at it from. I mean, they 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 freaking choked. So that's that's my speech on that. Well, on that note, before we go, Lucha Underground had a fun show on Wednesday. Any uh, any highlights you want to talk about? Um, you know, a lot of the stuff was really quick. I just remember that freaking Angelico drop kick. I mean, it's like, what the hell was that? That was like <laughs> out amazing. of his mind. <laughs> out of his mind. That's the second time he's jumped off that roof of Dario Cueto's office. They're yeah, but you really know what? The silly. first time, at least he did like a crazy dive and he was caught by was multiple caught. men. I know. This is like he took a bad <laughs> It was a drop kick. He's out of his mind. Oh, my God. I guess he's okay. I haven't heard that he got hurt. Nah, he seems, uh, I mean, this was a long time ago, and, and uh, he, he seems fine. Working? Yeah. You know, the one who's hurt is Ivelisse, you know, and they had her climb a ladder with a broken leg, broken ankle or something, a broken foot, whatever she had. I mean, to be fair, he did land perfectly. It was just from very, very high, from very far away. Yeah, really high and really far away. <laughs> I don't know what I to mean, say about the guy. How high is that thing? It's what? 20 feet? I it looks know. at least 15 to 20 feet. Like, that legit. So not pro high. wrestling. And 15 like, to 20. It's not like, you know, he was falling into the ring. I mean, I mean, I mean, when you got a running start, you know, it, it is pretty easy to hit your mark. I don't say easy because I'd probably die trying it, but you could die. You know what I mean? What if you didn't hit the ring? What if you tripped on your run? I mean, it, that's, that's, you know, they talk about life, uh, you know, taking your life in your own hands. I wouldn't, you know, again, that's a, only a slight exaggeration here. I mean, my God. But, you know, it was it was phenomenal. I hope, I hope like, uh, I don't know. I, I don't hope anyone does it again, but I hope everyone that saw, I hope it gets as much entertainment value out of out of it that as, as it can. Because, my God. But, yeah, I mean, Lucha Underground, I'm not, I'm not into the, um, um, you know Katrina disappearing deal, and I'm I'm not really into the uh, the monster Dario Cueto's monster brother who killed, um, you know Black Lotus's parents, and she's coming back to the temple to find him to kill him, and and then the mask dude. Who's the mask dude? You mean her trainer? The trainer, yeah. I, he's just a. I, I don't think he's necessarily a character other than her trainer. The maestro yeah, the trainer had a cut deal with Chavo to protect her. And by doing so, I guess it absolved Chavo's debt. I guess the Chavo had, like, debt. To... Well, he had heat on him for killing Blue Demon. No, but it was a debt. His debt was, re, you know, so it was, I mean, whatever it was. I think they explained that people wanted to kill him because he destroyed Blue Demon. That was that was the debt that he's well, that owed. Was, oh, so that's the debt? I believe so. That was what I got out of it. Yeah. It could, it could be, you, you could be right. I mean, I do remember that, that storyline of, um, you know, the word on the streets is that, you know, you did that to Blue Demon and everyone in Mexico wants to get you. So. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's, 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 I'm hoping to hear, I'm hoping to hear that they get their two TV deals that they need because if they do, they're, they're in good shape. Um, I, I the product is mostly very good, but the you know I I just believe that the silliness I don't know I mean the silliness reminds me of the last season of Roller Jam and I just remember that you know again I wouldn't want to copy the last season of Roller Jam when you go from a you know point six to a point four um, and and it's just a bad thing you know it's 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 copying failure when you get that silly. So um, I don't like them to get that silly. I think that when you're established and you have a large audience, 
Um, you can pretty much get away with a ton because you're established. Like WWE. WWE has done some really weird stuff. But they're WWE. If TNA did it, TNA would, would lose audience doing it. And Lucha Underground, I'm not saying they'll lose audience because their audience is so small. And that audience that, that they have now is, is an audience, because of this, the size of it and being so small and everything, that's going to overlook the bad because they think you know, they're into Lucha Libre anyway or they think it's cool. And there's some, there is a cool factor to the show. But I also think that if they get big, um, it's probably a bad direction to take early on. I'm not even saying – it may, it may be a bad direction any time, but I would say I, wouldn't, I would not want to go that silly to the, you know, until I've got that base audience big. And they don't have that, so um, I think that's a mistake. Um, but they got some, you know, Johnny uh, Johnny Mundo is is tremendous as a heel. Um, Way better as a heel. Tremendous, tremendous. Um, Alberto, obviously, um, in that setting, the people go nuts for him. He comes across as a big time player. Uh, they got things, obviously, when when the Ray deal was signed. Um, you know, that's when, uh, you know, that's going to be the big signs are when the Ray deal is signed and when, I mean, not Ray, and I don't mean El Ray Network, I mean Ray Mysterio. Um, but when that's signed and then the other two deals that they're working on, which are Univision and Televisa, um, you know, when those two are signed, if they are, um, then, then, you know, they're, they're, sol- they're, they're probably solvent. I mean, they may need more investment money as well. I don't know. They, they probably do. But Televisa, you know, that's that's great exposure in Mexico. Great exposure. And and I know that they're talking I know the talks with Televisa Channel Five, which is even better than you know, that's the station UFC's on. Um that's a really you know, that's a that's that's a really good station. That will establish them in Mexico as the most watched. Uh, they would probably be um you know, I can't guarantee it, but because of the station they would have a leg up on being more watched than WWE or AAA. So they could be, because of this nature of being on a strong station, the most watched um, um, Lucha Libre show in Mexico, which is a good thing to be. And in the United States, they get on Televisa, they're going to be number two by leaps and bounds. They're going to blow away TNA and uh, you know um, New Japan, um, a Ring of Honor, um, you know, which they're not now. Um, now, um, yeah, they're, they're, you know, I don't know, I don't know what the, um, Unamas numbers are. They were, you know, hovering around 200, 250 the last I, last I heard, um, which is still well below, um, you know, a lot of people, but, and then the English audience is still, you know, you know, it's, it's up. I mean, their English audience is up, but it's still, you know, I don't know, 60, 70 most weeks, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Um, so yeah, that's the deal with Lucha Underground. All right, everybody. On that note, we're going to wrap it up here today. Hopefully, everyone has a great Memorial Day weekend. No uh, shortage of stuff here. Observer Live tomorrow. Brian and Vinny show tomorrow. Observer Live Monday. Observer Radio Monday after the Go Home Raw. That's right. There's already a Go Home Raw for the Elimination Chamber. So we'll talk about all that. Uh, new Observer. Make sure you read the TNA article before you email or tweet Dave. And. Uh, <laughs> I think that's pretty much over. I think pretty much, you know, that, God, I don't know. Well, I'm, luckily Brian, you... I'm, Brian, because I haven't even talked to you about this other than, you know, we talked on Wednesday night, but we haven't talked since Wednesday. What do you make of all this? In in what sense? TNA. <laughs> I don't... I... Uh, listen, I've been, I've been dealing with... I had a great caller the other day who uh, went on and on, having clearly not read your article, and... Uh, well, no, 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 like I said, nobody who complained, you know, virtually nobody who complained actually read the article. And, and you know what? And, and, and I don't buy for a second that the people in TNA who complained read it either. I think they just, you know, it's neat. I think it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good uh, possibility Eric Young didn't read that article. Well, Eric Young, didn't, he didn't mention me my name or anything. I think Eric Young's just saying, again, there were people who were running around saying TNA's going to die. And, you know... Uh, well, I mean, it may, but nobody it reported may, it that. May, it may. It may. And I, know, have, it, I have it, nothing to add that you have not already said. I, I have said the same thing. I, I hope that they move to Wednesday. 
and the numbers are great, and a bunch of advertisers suddenly decide this is great that's programming. Not, that's not, that's not, not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> but the, 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 num- the numbers may, the numbers may go up. I mean, logically, logically, the numbers should go up. But and I would I would you know again if this was a year ago I would say the numbers are going to go up. But but after SmackDown. You know, it's like I got to start hedging my bets now. Because... Not to mention, they're not even giving it like it, it's not even like we're going to, uh, you know, for two months uh, announce that we're going to be moving to Wednesday to give people a heads up, get them prepared, I mean, get them ready, at, have a big think... Wednesday special show to kick it off. It's but just think moving. About, think about this, okay? And here's another thing too. And 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 um, I didn't. Know, did, I think that they did the second um, Wolves against. Um, um, Dirty Heels, man. Okay, I got to talk to you about that. So I I did hear uh, that 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 match had aired on the international version. I can't believe that. But the best but match but the but but, but wait wait wait. I also got another report where it did not air. I don't know if maybe they sent out two tapes. I don't know if maybe Canada got one version, and if you lived elsewhere internationally, you got another version. I don't know what happened. But I, I did hear from people that said that that match was on there, and I heard from other people that had a report that there was no Wolves match on there. So I'm really confused now. Well, we don't we don't have we don't have a report on the site on on the um, Canadian version, do we? I have not seen it yet. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I I sure hope that Wolves match wasn't put on there. That would that would be really, you know, I don't know. It would it wouldn't it wouldn't be good. Um, yeah, but I mean, like, if you think about this, okay? When 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 WWE moved from Friday to Thursday, okay? Think about how much promotion they did with that Sigmund Freud dude or whatever with all the you remember? The, oh yeah. But I mean, we had commercials for weeks and weeks, you know, just hammering home that they're moving to Thursday, and and even then the numbers dropped, um, and TNA's you know, again. They they did let's see on the Friday show that I saw they had this they had this little graphic that almost nobody would have seen and then they they did have a commercial um, but it was you know it's nothing like the, the way the WWE promoted it so you know uh, yeah it's and plus it's the summer not that I guess wrestling doesn't really matter the summer's not necessarily that like like regular TV where the summer's like a lot less viewers I mean there's some somewhat less but. Yeah, it's, um... So at the, 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 the Wednesday call, right? Um, so they're there, and, and, and Dixie's, like, saying that, like, you know, she knew all along, and it's, you know, the stories that Dixie didn't know are not true, but nobody... I don't say no oh one believed God. her. Oh, my God, hold on a second, hold on a second. I don't want to say, I don't want to say no one, I don't want to say no one believed her, because I'm sure if I say that, it's not true, but... Um, there was a lot of skepticism. In, okay, in hold story. on. Let me just stop you right there. Yes. So I know, and this I know is, you know, and this is common knowledge because MVP was very upset about it. There was a lot of talent very upset about being left in the dark and having to find out about this Ring of Honor deal on Twitter. Yes. So everyone did. Why would you not tell the people what I believe is the truth, which is Dixie didn't know. Why don't you just say I didn't know and put the heat on Destination America? Because as opposed to going out there and saying I knew all along, I didn't tell you guys, and coming off like, oh "Oh my god, no, 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 I'm I can tell you why. Because if I'm talent and I'm told, okay, and there's rumor, there's there's already stories that are you know that they're going to cancel you. Um. If Dixie goes, I didn't know. They're going like, oh my god, they're canceling us for sure, because they would, you know, they freaking double crossed us. But if you tell, if Dixie says that, oh, I, I knew, you know, we're all working together, and it's it's all it's actually for all, all of our benefits. Um, but I couldn't tell anyone. <laughs> okay, and she said they're working together, like Ring of Honor and TNA is working together. No, she didn't. She, she said that everyone's on the same page, but not that they're working together. So anyway, one of the questions that came up was. Are um, are we going to be doing an interpromotional angle? And John Gaborik goes, um, "I'm trying. I, I I didn't hear it. Okay. So my rephrasing of this, the the gist of what he said, I will have accurate. The wording will not be accurate. Okay. But the gist of what the message was was he said that 
Um, I cannot answer that question due to confidentiality. However, I'm not. Te- <laughs> however, I'm not telling you that it won't happen. Except it won't happen. I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it would make sense to happen, but but if it did, I mean, here's the problem. I mean, can you imagine? Like, it's very difficult for two promotions to 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 make that work. I mean, Gabe Sapolsky did it with Ring of Honor and CCW years ago, and actually, it was tremendous, really tremendous. But that's because CCW kind of let Gabe do what he wants. Now, on this one, if I'm Ring of Honor, do I let TNA be in control of this? No freaking no, way. No, and they're not going to. Okay, but if I'm TNA, do you are you going to listen to uh, Ring of Honor? And it's like, mm, I'm thinking that they won't. So it's going to be very difficult politically. I'm not saying it's impossible, but I mean, as far as should they do it, they absolutely should do it. It'll, it'll, it'll. If it will benefit both short term and will probably end up in a big disaster at the end, which to where it probably will benefit nobody in the long run. But but this isn't like, going to happen. Well. I suppose I am supremely confident the chances of this happening are very, very slim. Well, you better tell John Gaborik. <laughs> I think that John Gaborik probably knows as well. Then you better tell the TNA talent. And also, somebody was asking about any chance of returns happening on the June 3rd Destination America show. It's a taped show. It's a taped show. All of the shows are taped shows. It's the same show that's airing on Sinclair, so there will not the, be the any... show's already the show's already aired all over. Um, the show's already aired in in most markets by now. It is it's the first hour from Toronto with uh, Donovan, D Jack, and um, Jay Diesel against the Briscoes in the main event, which is kind of a weird main event on your first show, but that's just how it works. All 